Hey guys welcome to Pocket Saga, so in today's video we are gonna see, what if Ash was in Paldia with Lily, part 4. This story is Ash's Paldia story by author Ray Chu. Before starting if you are interested in Pokemon fanfictions you can consider subscribing this channel and like this video that will help a lot, now let's dive in. Monday, it is Monday, and now Raysa and Luke are joining us as we are going to find the green stakes that are close to Casaroya Lake. Raysa says, so the stakes are around these parts of the area? I guess so. I say, I just hope it isn't that hard to find. While we are on our way, we also decide to capture two other Tatsugiri in the area. One is red and the other one is yellow. Tatsugiri, droopy form. The mimicry Pokemon, dragon and water type. This species' differing colors and patterns are apparently the result of Tatsugiri changing itself to suit the preferences of the prey it lures in. Tatsugiri, stretchy form. The mimicry Pokemon, dragon and water type. It's one of the most intelligent dragon Pokemon. It camouflages itself by inflating its throat sac. So when Dondozo uses order up, droopy form raises the defense, and stretchy form raises the speed. That's good to know, I say. It sure is, Lily says. Now we can just find the stakes, right? Of course, and we have to make sure that Team Rocket is not going to do something this time. I sigh. The first stake is on a platform right at the me point between West Province Area 3 and Glaciado Mountain. The second stake can be found in the top left area of Casaroya Lake, right before the North Paldine Sea begins. Right in the zone where Glaciado Mountain and Sokarad Trail meet, we find the third stake on one side of the mountain. In the center islet of Casaroya Lake, go to the right side and we manage to get the fourth stake. Also on an islet on the southern side of Casaroya Lake, the fifth stake rests on a very small portion of land. Located in West Province Area 2, we easily spot the sixth stake from the Casaroya Watchtower Number 1. From the sixth stake's location, we come inside the caves and spot the seventh stake sitting on top of a stone platform. And finally, the last stake is in the top left of West Province Area 2, right before the Casaroya Lake Zone begins. After pulling out the last stake, we decide to head to the shrine, which is located at Sokarat Trail. The green gate is hidden in a hole. Still no Team Rocket nearby, Nimona says. They come in just when we defeated Chi and Pao, and I'm sure that they're going to do the same thing again. I say. But first, we have to defeat the treasure of ruin first. I touch the gate, and when the gate opens, the ground is shaking as a deer-like Pokemon with a giant vessel on top of its head walks and every step it takes makes us unable to stand still. That is Ting Lu. The vessel of ruin, I say. It is dark and ground type. We have to be careful. Ground type this time. Lily says. If we use flying types, it might have some rock type moves to counter it. I think we just need to use those who are super effective against this Pokemon. Then we send out Palafin, who is already in its hero form, Klawitzer, Gudra, Tropius, Avalug, and Toadscruel to battle. Ting Lu growls and all of our Pokemon's special attack stat are lowered. Well, that is not surprising at all. Maybe the last one is going to be the special defense drop, Raysa says. I agree. Palafin, Jet Punch. I yell as I have Palafin uses the water type quick attack, and it does a lot of damage. Clawitzer. Aura Sphere. Lily yells, and the attack also hits Ting Lu, but doesn't seem to do that much damage. Ting Lu slams its head to the ground, creating earthquake, only Tropius is not affected by the attack. That is a powerful earthquake, Drandon says. Tropius, Leaf Storm. Tropius is about to attack with the leaves, but Ting Lu uses Rock Slide to make it flinch as it falls to the ground. Avalug. Raysa says, Icicle Crash. Avalug goes for the Ice type attack and it deals more damage. And this time, Ting Lu goes for the Ruination cutting all of our Pokemon's HP in half. Of course it has Ruination as well. Luke says as he has Toad Screw uses Spore, making Ting Lu fall asleep. Recover. Synthesis. Raysa and Drandon decide to heal their Pokemon, and I say, Palafin, use Wave Crash. I continue to attack Ting Lu, but the attack causes it to wake up again and it uses Dark Pulse, hitting Palafin. Clawitzer. Water Pulse. Lily continues to attack, and this time Ting Lu is confused. Now let's finish it off, Nimona says, Aqua Tail. 
Gudra goes for the attack, and eventually, Ting Lu is defeated. I take out the Ultra Ball, and throw it at Ting Lu, after three shakes, the Pokemon is captured. Ting Lu. The ruinous Pokemon. Dark and ground type. It slowly brings its exceedingly heavy head down upon the ground, splitting the earth open with huge fissures that run over 160 feet deep. When I was about to take the Ultra Ball on the ground, a mechanic hand appears as it grabs the Ultra Ball. Hey! What's going on here? Lily demands, and it turns out that Team Rocket, who is inside the hot air balloon. We'll be taking this Ting Lu, James says, and thank you for capturing them for us, Meowth says. Now we got what we want, let's retreat, Jesse says. As they are about to fly away, I yell, don't let them get away. We chase after the balloon until we get to Team Star's ferry base, and just then, the balloon is suddenly hit by the moonblast and it crashes to the ground. Hey! Who did that? James yell. Where is Ting Lu's Pokeball? Meowth asks. Are you looking for this? The Team Rocket Trio sees Ortega holding the Ultra Ball, beside him, and a Hatterene is standing beside him. At the same time, we also arrive and I say, Ortega. Ash, Lily. What's wrong here? Ortega asks. They're Team Rocket. They're bad guys who steal Pokemon. My father was killed by their group. I say. That Ultra Ball, it was my Pokemon that they stole from me. I see. Ortega says as he gives me the Ultra Ball, and at the same time, Jesse and James are back up as they are angry. Then we'll just have to take it by force. They send out Mimikyu and Marini, with Marini hugging James and making his face purple again. Oh no. Not that Mimikyu. I say with horror as the Mimikyu notices Pikachu and starts to attack, with Pikachu trying to dodge. Ortega says, Hatterene, use Psychic. Hatterene is now battling Marini, who uses Baneful Bunker to block the attack, and after Pikachu manages to defeat Mimikyu with the Iron Tail, the two of us use Thunderbolt to send them flying. I'm really grateful for you to help us, Ortega. I say, we really appreciate it. No problem. Ortega says to me, but what are you guys doing here? I thought you guys have class. We don't have class until this afternoon, Lily says so we are just capturing some Pokemon. I see. So this Team Rocket. I'm sure that, unlike Team Star, they're pure evil, right? Yeah. They have been causing me trouble for a lot of time, I say, and this time we're going to end them for sure. I hope you guys are going to do that, Ortega says, you have my support as friends. Thanks, I say. Raisa asks, so this is the leader of the Team Star's fairy crew, and she knows Ash and Lily personally? They are childhood friends. Drandon says. But he's older than Ash and Lily, that's why the two of them are sad that they were not with him when he was being bullied. And we also get to learn more about the Operation Star. Nimona says. I knew what happened, but I never knew the aftermath, and to think all of it happened. It's already in the past, let's not think about it, Lily sighs. So you're not going back to school? I ask, not yet, I still have some things to do here before I go back like the others. Ortega says. You guys can go first without me. We nod as we bid farewell to Ortega and head back to the school. This is Ting Lu, the vessel of ruin. I show the Pokemon to Professor Rayford. With the help of Wo Qian and Xian Pao, Ting Lu is also getting along with Lily and me. Judging by its shape and size, this vessel was almost certainly not for everyday use. Perhaps it was a work of art? Or, better yet, a ritual artifact housing some sort of deity? I feel that there must be some meaning behind the horns and the designs resembling eyes. Could it be that this artifact was fashioned after the deity's very appearance? I wonder. The fear from the ritual is bound to the rocks and earth and creates this Pokemon. I say. That is Ting Lu. This mystery grows ever deeper. Ah. My thirst for knowledge is slowly being quenched. Seeing part of history with my own eyes fills me with joy. I thank you all, Rayford says. No problem. Now we only have one left, I say with a smile. After that, we decide to get to Professor Jack's biology class, as this is the last class this semester. Professor Jack is still teaching us about Pokemon forms, which is something that we already know. Tuesday. The last class of Professor Time's math class is type matching and multipliers, which is interesting to calculate but actually not useful for me in the battle. And Professor Rayford's history class is the invention of the Terra Orb. 
We're happy to learn how the Terra orbs are made. After class, we decide to find a Veluza for the team as we still don't have this Pokemon yet. Luckily they can be found at the sea close to the Paldia region. Veluza. The Jettison Pokemon. Water and Psychic type. When Veluza discards unnecessary flesh, its mind becomes honed and its psychic power increases. The spare flesh has a mild but delicious flavor. This one has the ability Sharpness. I say. Sharpness boosts the strength of slicing moves used by a Pokemon with this ability by 50%. Slicing moves. Like Night Slash or Leaf Blade. Lily says. I guess we have all the Paldia Pokemon, right? Well, except for Bisharp's evolution, and I'm still not sure how to evolve it into Kingambit, I sigh. Did Giacomo tell you how it evolved? Nimona asks. He told me that I need to defeat three Bisharp with the item. Leader's Crest. I say. But all I've found in the Paldia region is Ponyard. Or Bisharp that doesn't even have that item. Noivern has been helping me with the Frisk ability, but all I find is nothing. We still have a part of Paldia region that we've never been to. Lily says as she looks at the map. North Province Area 1 and 2. It is also close to Team Star's fighting type crew. Maybe we'll be able to find some there. I hope so. I say. Wednesday. The last class of the language class is still about the expressions of Pokemon, and the battle studies class is link battles, which is something that is related to virtual battles. After the class, we decide to look at the Galar Fair, the final fair for this semester. We see the exhibit of the darkest day, and I decide to tell them the story. 3000 years ago, when Eternatus attempted to stay alive by absorbing Galar's energy, it caused a red light to appear. This resulted in the darkest day. This phenomenon, in the form of a black storm, caused Pokemon to Dynamax and Gigantamax. However, they went berserk in the process, almost destroying the region. The event ended when Eternatus was defeated by Zacian and Zamazenta, along with the two heroes that wield the sword and the shield. So I have to guess that Eternatus awakened again and you are one of the heroes that stop it? Raisa asks. Eternatus was awakened because Chairman Rose wants to use it to avert the Dynamax energy shortage predicted to happen after a thousand years. I sigh. He wants Leon to capture the Pokemon but failed. I see. I heard that a year ago, Chairman Rose was arrested, so this is what happened, Luke says with a frown. Then we head to the next exhibit, and it is showing Kubfu and Urshifu. In the Galar region, there is a place known as the Isle of Armor. Kubfu is the secret armor living in that place. Only those who have achieved the trials of the Master Dojo will be able to achieve them. It evolves into Urshifu when shown the scroll in one of the Towers of Two Fists. The form it evolves into depends on the tower it is trained in. I know. There is the single strike style and the rapid strike style, Lily says. Both of them are equally amazing. Indeed. I smile. Then we also look at Zarud and it also reminds me of the day when I met Coco and Dada. And after that, we also get to see Regileki and Regidrago. So those two are similar to the Regis that we saw in the other fairs? Raisa asks. Yeah. Both Pokemon are also strong, and I wonder why they only reside in the split decision ruins aside from other places, I sigh. And this is the final one. The King of Harvest. Calyrex, Luke says. Calyrex is said to have ruled Galar in ancient times as a merciful king. It also has the power to see the past, present, and future of any kind when at full power. One legend said Calyrex used its foresight ability to save creatures of a forest from a meteor one time. One fairy tale even mentions Calyrex stealing the body of a human that causes mischief. It has been referred to as the King of Bountiful Harvests, due to its role in bringing lush vegetation and harvests yearly. Calyrex's right hand can cause the land to be covered in verdant grass and blooms, while its left hand allows it to make fields of fruit ripen and become heavy. Calyrex can create either ice root or shade root carrots, depending on the field where the carrot seeds are planted, with a special dance. Calyrex can also create the radiant petal needed for the reins of unity. It can provide healings or blessings such as mending the heart. While it shows no mercy to those that stand in its way, it will heal the wounds of a foe afterward. Calyrex is powerful enough to move an entire forest and its Pokemon to a new location, Lily says. And it has two steeds, Glastrier and Spectrier. Each of the Pokemon is dangerous and only Calyrex is able to tame them. I say. 
and by riding the horse Pokemon, Calyrex can become Ice Rider or Shadow Rider, I say. That is amazing, Nimona says, Galar sure is something else. Thursday, we learn ribbons and marks in art class, and I know for sure that contest ribbons and other ribbons really help with the friendship with our Pokemon. And today is the day when we get to meet Leon, the former world monarch. He is not alone as he is accompanied by Sonya and Hop. After greeting them, Leon says, looks like you're having a lot of fun in school, Ash. Of course, it is not just learning, I am also training so that I can take on the league here in the Paldia region, I say. Hop says, you're already the world monarch, I'm sure you'll be able to handle the Pokemon League here without any problem. If you think that's the case then you're wrong, Nimona says. I'm sure our Elite Four and La Primera can give him a hard time. I sweat drop at how Nimona really likes her hometown, Leon says, so how about we have another battle, what do you think? I say, of course, and just so you know I'm not going to lose, but by the way, our school doesn't have the Dynamax energy to let you Gigantamax your Charizard. It is fine, not every battle I do has to be Gigantamax, Leon says. A normal battle is also fine for me. Then we all head to the battle court, and everyone gathers around us because Leon and my battle is something they can't miss, even though some of the students are trying to prepare for the final exam next week. Leon of course uses Charizard while I use Pikachu. Ash says, Pikachu, use quick attack. Charizard, counter it with thunder punch. Leon says as both attacks collide with each other. Ash says, then use iron tail. Ash says, and Charizard blocks it with thunder punch once again. Now keep going. Leon yells, Ash calls for an electro web, but Charizard breaks through it with thunder punch before using air slash, scoring a direct hit. Despite the attack, Pikachu is standing strong, Ash mutters. Leon is really different from the other opponents that I face. Pikachu. Thunderbolt. Flamethrower. Leon yells, and the two attacks are evenly matched. Leon, if you don't mind, I'm going to do something that belongs to the Paldia region. I take out the Terra Orb and uses it on Pikachu, and this time Pikachu has a Colosseum on top, meaning it's rock type. I have heard about this Terra Stall phenomenon, and I definitely want to battle one myself. Leon smirks flamethrower. Charizard fires the attack, but it is not very effective, I say, Pikachu, Electro Rock. I have Pikachu use its tail to get a boulder and then throw it to Charizard, hitting it super effectively, Hop says, is that a new move? Ash's Pikachu is capable of using moves of all 18 types, Lily says, and since his Terra type is rock now, this move is going to be very powerful. Leon says, flamethrower again, Ash says, I am not going to lose, Pikachu, quick attack. Pikachu uses speed as he flies into the fire, even though its health is losing, it still gets past the attack and tries to hit Charizard. Dodge it, Charizard. Leon yells with worry, but Charizard is paralyzed to even move, causing the quick attack to land a critical hit. I say, Pikachu, Electro Rock again. Pikachu delivers another move, and eventually, Charizard is defeated. Leon smiles and says, looks like you're not slacking after our match in the Masters Aid tournament. The same goes for you. Nice battle. We shake hands with each other and I can see the crowd cheering on us. Then we also decide to show Leon and the others around the Paldia region, because Leon is still the same person who doesn't have a sense of direction. Once it is over, we all bid the three of them farewell as Sonya decides to take Leon and Hop along without our help. Friday. The final class of home education is about the clothing that we're wearing and how different they are. And after class, we're going to meet Go and Chloe, who decide to come since the two of them are close to graduation from her school and are looking for a university. Ash. Lily. How are you guys? Go asks after we meet up at the Mesa Goza Plaza. We're doing fine, what about you guys? I ask. It was quite boring without you around. Chloe chuckles. And he doesn't give you any trouble, does he? Lily? Well, sometimes. Lily teases as I groan a little. Then we decide to introduce them to our friends, and they also seem to get along with one another. Raisa says, so you're saying that your Eevee can't evolve? Why is that? Chloe says, Eevee was not ready to evolve, and there are all kinds of evolutions that she can become. I want it to be her choice. I know, that's why we visited every evolution a year ago, I say. And go, 
Are you still trying to capture all the Pokemon in your journey? Well, I was also thinking about having a new path, since I've already seen Mew and been friends with him. Go says. As for capturing all the Pokemon, I couldn't compare to you, since you have every Pokemon in your team probably. Well, it is true that we almost completed the Pokédex, but there are a few more that we still need to capture. I say. By the way, you two are here to explore the university, right? Are you going to apply to the school next year? We're considering. Chloe says, but it will be weird to call you seniors after we get into the school. There is no need for formalities. I say. Nimona is actually a senior to us, but we still like to hang out with each other. Nimona says, though I probably would graduate soon after you get into the university, which is actually sad. I sweat drop a little, and Go asks, by the way, the school is also saying that you two have some weird cyclizer, can you show us? You mean Coraidon and Maridon? I say, sure. Here in the dorm building, we can let Pokemon out as long as they don't break the building. I send out both Pokemon, and both Chloe and Go are in awe at the two Pokemon. Chloe says, so what's the deal with those two Pokemon? I mean Coraidon and Maridon. We think that the two Pokemon are Cyclizer from the ancient past and the vast future. We don't know for sure, but there seems to be some sort of paradox that causes the Pokemon to be sent here, I say. We just encounter two Donphan back in the desert, and the only answers we will be able to find are from Professor Sada and Professor Turo. Lily says. And sadly, we're not going to meet them until the end of the semester. Why then? Go asks. Because we have final exams next week, Raisa says. I'm sorry, you guys must be preparing for it, right? And we just come in a bad time, Chloe says with an apologetic tone. I say, don't worry, Lily and I don't have any worries about the upcoming exams. Lily being the bookworm she is, and I have traveled for nine years, the knowledge that we have in class is just what we already know. And a lot of people are actually jealous of the two of them, Drandon says as we chuckle. Even though the final exam is near, Luke, Lily, Nimona, and I are still going to the North Province area too to do the final Team Star battle. When we ask Go and Chloe if they want to come, they refuse our proposal. Go says, sorry, but I want to catch new Pokemon in the Paldea region so I can fulfill my Pokédex. Chloe says, and besides, we couldn't really do anything if we come with you, and someone also needs to put Go in check so that he won't be doing anything stupid. I see. That's a shame. But I hope you all are doing well. I say as we all bid them farewell as we head to North Province Area 2. And just as we get to the Pokemon Center at North Province Area 2, we are delighted to see that there is a lot of Ponyard led by Bisharps. And the Bisharp are holding the leader's crest. Looks like we found them. I say with delight as I have my own Bisharp fighting the Bisharps, and after defeating three of them, it finally evolves into Kingambit. Kingambit. The big blade Pokemon, dark and steel type. Evolve from Bisharp by leveling up after defeating three Bisharp in groups with Ponyard that hold a leader's crest. Though it commands a massive army in battle, it's not skilled at devising complex strategies. It just uses brute strength to keep pushing. Luke says, it can learn the move Kowtow Cleave. The user slashes at the target after kowtowing to make the target let down its guard. This attack never misses. It is a useful move, but Kingambit might be useless against our final team star base for now. I sigh. Because it is a fighting type, and Kingambit is four times weak to fighting. Lily says, and according to Ortega, the last leader is a woman called Aerie. Aerie. I frown a little, Diantha has brought her friends from the university to our house before, and one of them is actually Aerie. We've only met once, but she's a nice person. My mother wants me to have a lucha libre against her, and she is skilled, but I was barely able to do anything against her. But to think that even she would get bullied. This slightly pains me a lot. Why would it be? Luke asks. If my sister is the one bullying her, then I could never forgive her or myself. But then again, my sister doesn't seem like the one who bullies people. She usually helps people, that's why they're best friends. I see. We will understand her backstory after we get into this base, Lily says. But you mean Lucha Libre? I never knew you would do that, Luke asks. Come on, Professor Kukui did that a lot of time. I chuckle. But the battle with Eri was actually my first time trying this Lucha Libre. She also told me that I have potential. 
That's why when Professor Kukui asked me to do that one day, I agreed. Yeah, we did see that. Lily says. When we're in front of the base, we get a call from Cassiopeia. I see you're almost at the fifth base. Hold up inside there is Team Star's last remaining squad. You've fought well to make it this far. Thank you, Ash, Lily, and whoever's helping you with raiding the base. No problem, I say. Ash, Lily, Cassiopeia, guys. We turn to see Clive walking toward us. So you made it as well, Clive. Cassiopeia says. Of course, it's the last base. I wouldn't want to miss out on the action. Clive says while doing his hair again. Clive, I owe you my thanks. Your help has been invaluable to the operation. Cassiopeia says, I'm sorry I was so wary of you at first. Well, that's all water under the bridge. Clive says, when we're finished with this base, will that be the end of Operation Starfall, then? Not quite. We'll still need to handle Team Star's secret mastermind last of all. Cassiopeia says, which is you, I suppose. Do we have any leads on how to find them? Clive asks. I'm hoping they'll come out into the open once all the squad bosses have stepped down. So you will show up once we defeat Aerie, is that what you mean? I see, Clive says. We've come so far, only a few more steps left. Don't let me down, either of you. Cassiopeia says as she ends the call. Cassiopeia's hung up. All right, Clive sighs. Thanks to you guys, I've slowly but surely come to understand Team Star. I know what I need to do. And I know what my final decision will be. For that, I can't thank you enough. Take care in that base. Master Ash, Master Luke, Miss Lily, and Miss Nemona. Wait, so you're not going to act as Clive, since you just told our names politely? Lily asks. Ah, sorry for getting all polite there. Don't know what came over me. Just please still call me Clive before this is over. Clive says. Okay. Then Clive goes to the base first as we decide to prepare our Pokemon at the Pokemon Center nearby. After we reach the gate, we find that Clive is already facing Aerie already. Aerie says, you're pretty skilled. Not many trainers can shrug off my Pokemon's attacks like that. The same to you, Aerie, was it, your Pokemon have clearly spent a lot of time honing their moves. Clive says, but I'm surprised to find the boss herself out there defending the gates. Don't you trust your grunts enough to put them on guard duty? Watch your mouth. I'm here because I don't want to risk anyone else getting hurt, that's all. Aerie says. What a benevolent boss. Now, if you want to get on with our battle, I'm already on my side. Clive says. Clive, what's going on here? Nimona asks as we approach, and Aerie also notices me with a surprised expression. Ash, Lily, Nimona, Luke, there you are. Clive says, I started talking to this girl since she looked like she was with Team Star, then she and her Pokemon came at me without warning. We were just battling it out. I know, Aerie, I never thought you would be the boss of this squad. I frown a little. T-C-H, Aerie slightly grits her teeth, I think she doesn't know how to face me after that, and then a grunt yells, Riri. I knew you'd be out here. Carmen, Aerie gasps, are you okay, you're not hurt are you? The grunt named Carmen asks. I'm fine, honestly, now get away from here, it's not safe. Aerie says. I'll take over guarding the base, Riri. You should get back inside. Carmen says. No, I won't back down, I can't, especially since the brother of my best friend is here. Aerie says. Brother of her best friend. So Diantha and she are best friends. Oh, Riri, you need to stop this. Carmen says, until the big boss comes back, I have to protect all of you in the calf squad. Aerie says, and everyone else in Team Star, too. That's why you should get back to the base and rest up, even just for a little bit. Carmen scolds. As the boss of this squad, I, I just can't. Aerie frowns. Riri, please, I'm your friend, listen to what I'm saying. Carmen says. Aerie flinches at her tone and sighs, fine. I'll go, I'm sorry, Carmen. Hey, that's no way to sign off. Let me hear an, hasta la vista. From you, nice and loud. Then Aerie decides to do the same pose as the grunts and leaves with the words. I'm your opponent now, you guys. 
Come on, I'll take you all down. Carmen says to us. Hey, guys, my Pokemon and I are actually running on empty after that last battle. Sorry to spring this on you, but do you think you could handle this grunt alone? Clive asks. So that means Ares Pokemon's toughness is actually equal to Director Clavel. I guess we should do this. Fine by us. I'll protect Riri with everything I have. You ready to battle? Carmen asks. Then here I come. She uses Krogunk and Primeep to battle, so Lily and I use Veluza and Braviary to battle, and we manage to defeat both Pokemon with ease. I lost, but my defeat's not the one that matters. Carmen says. Even if all I did was buy Riri a bit of time, that's fine. My job here is done, so I'll head back inside. Asta la Vistar. Then she leaves for the base, as we get the call from Cassiopeia. I take it you defeated the guard out front. That base is run by Team Star's fighting crew, the Calf Squad. Their boss, Eri, is a skilled wrestler and coaches the whole of Team Star in Pokemon battling. Of all the bosses, she'll likely be the most alert to hostilities after our declaration of war. She might try to stop this raid in its tracks by challenging you to battle before anyone else. Yeah, that sounds like her, and I mean, she did try to do that. I knew it, tell me what happened. Cassiopeia suddenly shouts, much to our surprise. After explaining to her, she gasps, she, retreated. We're talking about the same Airy, right? Well, it seems there's nothing for it now but to attack the base head on. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready to kick off this phase of the operation. Time to wipe the calf squad off the map. After the call ended, Luke says, so fighting types are the last. I wonder what you think about that. Well, I use a lot of fighting types as well, like Heracross, whose sleep talk helps me a lot, Lucario is just great because of our aura, Halicha is a little weird because of his constant posing, and Surfetched with his great skills. All of them are great. And remember the Z move all out pummeling. The Mele Mele Kahuna Hala really does a lot on your Pokemon. Lily says. Yeah, and that is also my first Kahuna battle. How ironic that this is our last type to face. I mutter as I press the bell and enter the gate. Code red. Code red. Operation Starfall alert. Everyone, get into position and defend the boss with all you got. And rest assured, intruder, we'll deal with you without the boss's help. Unless you manage to beat 30 of our Pokemon in 10 minutes, that is. Good luck with that. The Pokemon they are using in the area are Mankey, Primeep, Heracross, Toxicroak, Passamian, Hariyama, Medicham, Crabominable, Phalynx, Flamigo, Halicha, Gallade, and Breloom. We use Veluza, Braviary, Gudra, and Corviknight to battle the Pokemon, and even though this is the strongest base, all of our Pokemon still fight very hard and they manage to defeat all 30 of them in the end. I, I don't think we can hold him off much longer, boss. The grunt yells. So Eri is going to show up now. You may be my sister's best friend, but you still have to pay for your actions by joining Team Star. When the final Star Mobile appears, Eri is standing on top of it. Eri also throws her cape away as she is already in her Lucha Libre costume. Okay, I'm ready. Eri sighs. Ash Ketchum, a few weeks ago, your sister informed me about you trying to stop us members of Team Star, and since then I have been prepared to fight you. Are you telling me that my sister is also a part of Team Star? I demand. No, she is not a member, and I don't intend to drag my best friend into the mess of Team Star as well. Eri says, and I sigh in relief. I hold no grudge against you or the others, however, I also have my own friends in Team Star. I'll bury anyone who tries to take down Team Star. And this time, I won't run away. The same goes for us. Bring everything you got, Eri. I yell. She goes for Toxicroak, Passamian, Lucario, Phalynx, Tauros Combat Breed, and Anhiliope. All of them are fighting type Pokemon, although I was surprised that she isn't using a Holocha, maybe because that was the Pokemon that Clive managed to defeat before we even come. Luke, Nimona, we're counting on the assistance. I say as they nod. We go for Braviary, Veluza, Noivern, Dragapult, Grimsnarl, and Rabska. This is our final badge and we're not going to lose this one. Eri uses the Terra Orb on Anihilope, making it pure fighting type. This base is precious to us. 
I won't let this raid of yours go any further. Eri yells as she commands Toxicroak use poison jab on Grimsnarl, poisoning it. Grimsnarl, Spirit Break, Rabska, Psychic, both Pokemon attack Passamian, who dodges and goes for the Earthquake, hitting all of the Pokemon except for flying types. Noivern, Hurricane, Braviary, Crush Claw, both Pokemon are hitting Tauros, but Tauros goes for Raging Bull on Rabska, it also breaks the Reflect and Light screen that we set up. Toxicroak is then hit by Veluza's Psychic Fangs, and it is defeated. But Veluza is also hit by Lucario's Dark Pulse and Anihilape's Rage Fist, as it is also defeated. Wait, Lily says, Rabska, Revival Blessing, and thanks to Rabska's help, Veluza is now back in action. Then Tauros is also hit by Dragapult's Acrobatics and Braviary's Air Slash, and it is defeated. Let's keep up this momentum. Braviary, Hurricane on Anihilape. I yell as the Pokemon sends out Hurricanes and hit the evolution of Primeep. Passamian, Seed Bomb on Veluza, Anihilape, Rage Fist on Dragapult. Eri yells as both Pokemon are now attacking our other two Pokemon, and Veluza is still knocked out in the end and we just healed it with Rabska's Revival Blessing, oh well. I sigh as I give the Pokeball to Nimona and she is helping us heal it. Dragapult, Phantom Force, Lily commands as Dragapult hides in the shadows and then strikes Phalynx with the attack. Phalynx goes for no retreat to raise all of its stats, and then it goes for Iron Head on Grimsnarl, knocking it out. Now we have two down already. I mutter as I have Dragapult use Dragon Dance with Noivern, and both of them go for the Dragon Rush. Hitting Passamian and knocking it out. Anihilape goes for another Rage Fist, and Dragapult is down for sure. Damn it, I mutter as I have Braviary use Close Combat on Lucario, and Lucario tries to use Extreme Speed to attack back, and both of them eventually faint. Rabska, Psychic, Lily has the Pokemon use Psychic on Phalynx, and Phalynx is also defeated. When Dragapult is healed by Luke, we send it out again and have it use Psychic Fangs, defeating Anihilape. Now bring out the Star Mobile. I yell after all six Pokemon are down. I, I refuse to lose, so please, lend me your strength. Eri yells as she jumps out of the Star Mobile, as it starts to charge toward us. Combat Torque. The attack hits Noivern, and it causes the Pokemon to get paralyzed. I say, Noivern, hang in there and use Crunch. Noivern tries to get towards the Star Mobile, but the paralysis causes him unable to move, and when the Star Mobile uses gear up, it goes for spin out and knocks out Noivern. Ash, here you go. Veluza is healed once more as I have it use Aqua Cutter, and Dragapult is using Dragon Rush again to stop it from using Combat Torque on Veluza. When Braviary is healed, I have it use Hurricane, and eventually, combined with Psychic Fangs and Phantom Force, the Star Mobile is eventually defeated. I'm so sorry, everyone. Eri kneels to the ground while weeping. But she manages to wipe out her tears as she stands back up. I gave my all, but it wasn't enough, I wasn't enough. Eri, I walk towards her. You showed amazing strength. Even if the code didn't require me to give it to you, I'd want you to have this. Eri says as she gives me the final star badge, and we also do the elbow to elbow pose on the Rotom phone. I know you're part of Operation Starfall. Diantha, your sister, warned me about it. As for the others, I could tell from our battle that they're not bad people. The way your Pokemon look at you with such trust gives it away. Do me a favor and look away for a moment. This is a bit much for me to take. I just are really. Then she rushes away crying, and we all frown a little. Eri, despite my sister warning her that we're coming for her base, she still intends to fight us, even though she looks so strong on the outside. Lily says, I know. That just shows how we are. Clive and Carmen walk towards them and Clive says, looks like it's over. Oh, Riri, Carmen mutters, this is the Team Star member you battled at the gates earlier. I asked her to come along for a talk. Clive says, so, what did you want to ask me? Carmen asks, you seem to be on much friendlier terms with Eri compared to the other grunts. Clive says, why is that? Oh, you spotted that. Carmen blushes a little. Well, all right, I don't mind telling you. Truth is, I used to hate Riri. Wait, so this girl was her former bully. She's an amazing trainer and athlete, and she's really pretty, too. 
It took her no time at all to become popular at the university. I was the queen of the class before she and her other friend came along, but then everyone liked them more than me. So let me guess, you started to pick on her? I asked. Pretty much. I got our classmates to join in, too. We were all so stupid. Carmen says. We picked her first because she seemed to be the easier to pick on. But in the end, kids are always fickle, and once one thrill wears off, they look for something new. Before long, the class chose me as their next target instead of the other one, and they all started bullying me instead. How ironic. I have to say that the other friend must be my sister, but instead of having the classmates bully my sister, they bully Carmen instead. I guess I deserved it. But then Riri, she chose to help me even though I'd been so horrible to her. She told me that she understood how hard it is to have no one on your side. And she invited me into Team Star a couple of months later. Even after you bullied her like that. What a kind girl, Clive says. She really is. And joining the team has worked out great for us. It's been so much fun, Carmen says. Fun. There are rumors that Team Star likewise engages in bullying. Clive asks. After hearing my story, do you really think that's true? Carmen asks. Ah, oh, no, I merely, Clive mutters, Riri and the rest of Team Star made me who I am today. Please, don't take away our greatest treasure, Carmen says. Then we decide to leave Ari and Carmen alone as we head out of the base. When we get a call from Cassiopeia, she says, it's me. Did you do it? Did you claim Ari's star badge? We do, I say. Ari is also defeated by us. Without its boss, the calf squad should be a hair's breadth from disbanding. Cassiopeia says, like the other four times, she would be silent for a little before speaking. So Ari was the last. All five squad bosses have now been toppled from their pedestals. I imagine they'll leave Team Star before long now that they've lost their special positions. After that, they should soon be back attending classes at the university. Clive says, nice work out there, guys. Is that Clive I hear? Cassiopeia asks. Cassiopeia, well done to you, too. Clive says, thanks. Now, about your reward, I'll transfer some LP over to your phone. Cassiopeia gives us 20,000 LP this time. Oh, that reminds me. I'm doing the whole supply unit representative thing this time, right? Clive asks. Indeed, you can go ahead and give them the bonus reward now. Cassiopeia says. This time Clive is the one giving us the materials and Lily the fighting star badge. But what about Penny? Where is she this time? At long last, Operation Starfall has entered its final stage. Cassiopeia says, there's only one thing left on the agenda. You must defeat the big boss, and have Team Star disband for good. I sigh, okay, Cassiopeia. I think it is time that we demand some answers. I heard everything from Ortega and the rest of the bosses, since they are our friends or they knew our siblings. The true identity of the big boss is none other than you, right? Cassiopeia is silent for a while, as Clive seems to be shocked at this information. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep it from you for so long, but the right moment never came. I'm the one who formed Team Star. Back then, the members of the team were my closest friends, and I treasured them more than anything. If they go on like this, Team Star won't do any good for anyone. They've got to give it up. So I'm using the code we made together to force them to disband. She sighs, since the final exams are happening, I'll be waiting for you in the schoolyard after dark once this semester is over. You should come as well, Clive. Understood, Clive says. Then I'll see all of you there, Cassiopeia says as she ends the call. So Cassiopeia was the big boss of Team Star this whole time. I scarcely thought it possible. Clive sighs. But with this revelation, I just might have an inkling as to their true identity. It seems we'll find our answers after dark in the university's schoolyard after the semester's over. Let's prepare as best we can before heading over. Then we all nod as we head back to the school to find others and prepare for the final exam, and now that I think about it, there are so many things that we need to do after the final exam, this is surely giving me a headache. My father was a professional lucha libre athlete, since I was little, I was under his training so that after his retirement, I would be able to take his spot to become the best athlete like him. 
The only value I had to him was in whether or not I could become an athlete, and I was sad because of it. Time passed, and I grew strong, just like he wanted. So I paid him back for all the pain he'd shown me until that point. I made it so that he'd never be able to walk straight again, but, he was happy. Well done, now you will be able to go into the pro circuit. He says, and he signs me up for a couple of Lucha Libre contests, after winning a lot of them. My father finally shows his love towards me, saying that he's proud of me, apologizing to me for neglecting me when I was younger. I like Pokemon, especially fighting types. During the circuits, I am able to go around the world and find any fighting type Pokemon that I want and raise them. Eventually, my father also noticed my dream and decides to apply me to Narova University's Department of Battling. My school life at Narova University is quite fine. My appearance as a girl and how I kept my body fit brings attention to every male in the classroom. And that causes the girls in the same class as me to be jealous of me. There is one girl who has been glaring at me every time I walk into the classroom. Her name is Carmen, and she used to be the queen of the class. But when I get into the school, she loses her popularity. I don't hate her, but I think that she really needs to change her ways if she wants to be a popular student. All she does is bribe other students to do her dirty work. I don't know when it starts, but one day, when I get into the classroom, a bucket of water is dropped from the top of the door to my head. When I get the bucket out, I notice that everyone is laughing at me. All right, who the hell did this? I was furious, but I couldn't do anything because I don't have proof to know the culprit behind that. And since it is already class time, the last thing I want is to get detention from the teachers. I decide to brush it off as nothing, which turns out to be the wrong choice. Ever since that day, a lot of pranks have been thrown at me. Such as putting pins on the chair, doodles on my desk, banana peels close at my desk so I will slip and fall to the ground, and also other things. The only reason why I didn't get sent to the hospital wing was the fact that I'd been training with my father, but every time I get bullied, my classmates have been mocking me and made fun of me. Are you sure you're going to let them continue to do this to you? After I decide to push anyone away because of what happened to my bad school life, my classmate, Diantha, walks towards me and asks with concern. Oh, it's you, the Kalos champion, right? I sigh, she is as popular as me during the first months of school, and her popularity never stops as she is also good in drama classes and Pokemon battling. What do you want? I was concerned about you. Diantha says to me, you know, all of those things that happened to you, they are actually done by Carmen. So I am right, but why would she do such a thing to me? Eri asks, I don't think I have done anything wrong to her, it is not just her, why would everyone make fun of me when I was suffering? Diantha says, she is jealous of you, it is not just you, she also tries to pick on me as well. Just not as many times as you are. Jealous of me, for what? I ask with confusion, you have good looks, you have a nice body. You used to be the popular one in our class. Diantha says, I heard that before we enroll in the university, she is supposed to be the popular one. That just it, I can't believe what I'm hearing. How dare she? I really should find a chance to get to her and punch her in the face, but Diantha stops me and says, don't. Airy, violence is never the solution. She might be doing this to you but I'm sure that she will get what she deserves. Then what should I do now? I can't just ignore the problem forever. I say. How about we become friends? You are always alone, which is why you're easier to be picked on. However, if you hang out with us more, maybe we can keep an eye on each other's backs. I never thought of getting along with Diantha and her group, since they are always popular in our class and all of them are good at battling. I decide to join their group as I try to hang out with them. Every one of them is nice, and they stand up to those who were bribed by Carmen to bully me. I was always alone, but having friends like this, is what makes me happy. Diantha and I have become best friends, and she even invites me to her house in the Kanto region for vacation. In Kanto, I was surprised to learn that Diantha's mother is the queen of the Rota kingdom, which actually makes her the princess. She also has an older sister and a younger brother. The younger brother has also been seen on the news as he has a special Greninja. You know, Eri, how about you try to teach my brother how to do your Lucha Libre? 
Diantha asks me. Why? I mean, this is quite dangerous. I say, and if I teach your brother, he might be in a world of pain. Don't worry, he already knows how to endure the pain. Diantha says, his bond with Greninja is so strong that he will definitely feel its pain in the battle, and he can also control his movements. So I thought that doing Lucha Libre will help him. If you say so, I sigh as I decided to teach her little brother, Ash Ketchum. The way Ash Ketchum wants to learn wrestling is quite shocking to me, and the way he never gives up also reminds me of my past. I admit, he is interesting and I'm glad to teach him everything I know. After getting back to school, I notice that the people that tried to bully me are not bullying me anymore, and instead, they are now doing the same thing to Carmen. Even though I think that she deserves the pain, it just feels wrong to see her being ganged up by that. When she falls to the ground, I decide to reach a hand out to her and say, hey, are you alright? She tries to ignore me, but the pain causes her to reluctantly hold my hand. She asks, why do you help me? Because nobody deserves to suffer like that. I don't care who does it first, but I've noticed that you've always been alone. Trust me, I know how that feels. She looks at me with shock, she isn't sure why I was helping her. Instead of trying to bully me, why don't we become friends? Sometimes it should be better if we don't hurt one person and do revenge on another. After we chat for a while, Carmen finally breaks into tears and cries on my shoulder. I smile as I realize how lonely she is and I will like to help her out just like how Diantha helped me. A few months later, I was approached by a boy named Giacomo. He told me that I used to be bullied by others and asked if I wanted to join this team star to get revenge on those who hurt me. You don't need to worry about that. I've already stopped my part of bullying, so there is no reason for me to do something as stupid as revenge. I say as I was about to leave. Ari, we really need your strength you might be able to stop your part of bullying, but what about others? There are still a lot of people who are bullied, and they are still helpless. Are you going to ignore them? The one who asks me is a person called Cassiopeia, who talks through Giacomo's phone. She told me how she saw me helping Carmen because she was being bullied, and she thinks that I will be able to help them. After a lot of time thinking, I decide to discuss this with my best friend Diantha. She tells me that I should decide this on my own and if I think that joining Team Star is the right thing to do, then I should do it. And that's why I decide to join this group and become one of the leaders. Now before Operation Star begins, I am asked to help Giacomo and the others train their Pokemon. I'm so sorry, I think I went a little too far. I frown after my Anihilape destroys Giacomo's Kingambit in the training battle. Nah, don't worry about it. We're the ones who asked you to put us through some tough battle practice so we can train up. Giacomo says. Yeah, but, Eri frowns. Truly, you need not apologize, my lady. Atticus says. Thanks to thy sage instruction, I am making swift strides toward mastering the art of battle. And I could never have evolved my Pokemon without you, Eri. Ortega says. Even the big boss said it's thanks to you that we have a fighting chance against our bullies. Mela says. See, nothing but gratitude. To us, you're the brightest star in the whole team. Giacomo says. Hee hee, come on, quit being silly. I blush a little after hearing what Giacomo says to me. Um, just one thing. Ortega says. We've been training for four whole hours now. I'm totally pooped. Ah, I'm sorry. You all really should take a break. I say, I'll go for a run while you rest up. My lady. We four have each trained in our turn, but you, our steadfast mentor, have rested not once. I cannot help but worry for thy health. Atticus says. Atticus is right, ever since I helped them training, I haven't been able to take a break, but for some reason, I don't feel tired and I feel like I can continue to train. Thank you for your concern, Atticus. I sigh, but lately, I feel like I can take anything. No matter if I'm tired or feel like crying. Remember that time we all got together and riffed on the gym badge designs to create our very own star badges? Well, I don't know what it is, but just looking at my star badge makes me feel so strong. Like I want to give it my all. And the others are also motivated by my words, which is great for me. I'm sure they will be happy after they get their revenge on their bullies. So today you're going to fight against Team Rocket. 
I asked my mom through the Rotom phone. Couldn't you pick a better time? I mean, I'm having final exams starting tomorrow. I'm sorry, Ash, but we can't wait. Delia says to me with a frown. Besides, you only have one treasure of ruined Pokemon left, right? Yeah, I sigh. Only the beads are left. Don't worry. I promise I'll send all four of them to you once we capture the legendary Pokemon today. I'll wait for the good news. It is time for us to end Team Rocket once and for all. Delia says as she ends the call. Lily says, what are we going to do? Nimona, Riasa, Luke, and Drandon can't come with us because they need to study for the final exams. It seems like we're going to do this on our own. I sigh, let's go find the stakes. The first blue stake is in North Province Area 1, on top of a hill not far north of the area's Pokemon Center. The second blue stake is on a cliff just above Ares Fighting Crew Team Star Base. It's a little bit northeast of the North Province Area 2 Pokemon Center. We check out one of the tallest mountains above a waterfall near the Fire Scourge Shrine's location to find the third stake in North Province Area 2. And the fourth stake is inside the remains of a ruin just southeast of the Fire Scourge Shrine. The fifth stake is hanging out near a tree on a hilltop overlooking Tag Tree Thicket. We can find the sixth stake next to a big tree outside Levencia on a tall cliff. We head to the cliffs northeast of the Dalazapa Passage Pokemon Center to find the seventh stake on a grassy ledge with trees, and we head northeast over Glaciato Mountain to find the last stake by the coast. After taking out the last stake, we are going to the Fire Scorch Shrine to release the final treasure of ruined Pokemon. On our way, we are surprised to find Go, Chloe, Sonia, Hop, and Leon together. Ash, Lily, what are you doing here? Hop asks. I thought you guys were at school preparing for final exams. I say, as much as I want to, my mother wants me to get the final treasure of ruined Pokemon so we can use them to stop Team Rocket. Treasure of ruined Pokemon, what is that? Chloe asks. They are four legendary Pokemon which used to be the treasures until they were tainted by the darkness of humans. Lily says, we have three of them already and we're heading to the final one. Wait, you two are going to fight the legendary Pokemon alone. Go asks, at least let us come with you. Are you sure? You know what, I think it is fine, you can come along. I say. We all head to the shrine and I also explain each of the four treasures. So you say that Wo Chien is made from human grudges possessing the dry leaves, Chien Pao is made from human hatred possessing the snow, and Ting Lu is made from human fear possessing rocks and sand. Sonia says. And the final one is this one. Kai Yu made from human envy possessing the fire. I say as I open the gate, and then the Pokemon just come out with a loud roar. So that's Caillou, Chloe asks. Yes, and be prepared, we're going to fight against it. I say. Leon decides to go with Dragapult, and Hop decides to go with Intellion to help the battle. Ting Lu, Qian Pao, Wo Qian, come on out. I say as I send out all three of them and Caillou just stare at them before using its ability, lowering all of the special defenses. That's the Beads of Ruin, the ability that lowers the special defenses. I say, however, let's see how Caillou stands after being hit by these three's abilities. The Vessel of Ruin lowers the special attack, the Swords of Ruin lowers the defense, and the Tablets of Ruin lowers the attack stat, meaning that Caillou's stats are not that high enough to defeat all of our Pokemon. Ting Lu Rock Slide, Qian Pao, Avalanche, Wo Qian, Power Whip, I have the three Pokemon attack Caillou, but the Pokemon uses its small body to dodge the attack, and it lands the Lava Plume to damage Qian Pao and Wo Qian. It looks like a fish, but it is a fire type. That is not something I'm expecting. Chloe says. Of course not, Lily says. Leon has Dragapult use Dragon Darts, and Hop has Intellion uses Snipe Shot but the attacks don't seem to deal enough damage to Caillou. Then it roars as all of our Pokemon's HPs are cut in half. What was that move? The HPs are cut in half. Sonia says. That's ruination. I say. It always cuts the HP to half. We have to be careful. And just as we are going to continue to attack Caillou, a Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb manage to hit Intellion. Hey, who did it? Go asks with anger. And it turns out that Team Rocket comes with a giant drill. I groan as they never give up on doing something stupid. 
You guys again. I groan. Looks like all four of the treasure of ruins are here. Meowth. Jesse says. Leave it to me. They try to throw four nets to catch four legendary Pokemon, I say, Pikachu. Don't let them do it. Use Poison Jab. Pikachu uses the attack to break the nets, much to Team Rocket's surprise. I say, then use Electro Rock. I have the attack hit Mimikyu, slamming it into Amoongus. Intellion. We'll help as well. Use Liquidation. Go says as he has Intellion attack the Mimikyu. Dragapult. Shadow Ball. Leon is doing the same thing as it attacks the Amoongus. Now Pikachu. Parasetal Smack. I have had enough of Team Rocket and I definitely want to defeat them all by myself. Pikachu feels my anger as he is going to attack me. The bug type move eventually knocks out Amoongus, causing James to recall it. Shadow Volt. I yell. Pikachu uses the ghost type move to defeat Mimikyu. Jesse is forced to recall it. Flame Bolt. Followed by Psychic and Draco Meteor. I yell. And Pikachu hits the giant drill, causing it to be blasted out of the mountain. We're blasting off again. They all yell before disappearing at our sight. Chloe says, did Pikachu use the moves that usually a Pikachu can't learn? He has a lot of training after all. Lily says, but this is the first time Ash is using all those moves to send Team Rocket flying like this. I calm down a little and pet Pikachu, then I turn to Caillou, who also calms down and stares at me. Caillou, we really need your help to stop people like them. Will come with us and help us out. Caillou turns to the other three treasure of ruins, who nodded at him. I smile as I take out the Ultra Ball, capturing the Pokemon in the end. Caillou. The ruinous Pokemon. Dark and fire type. It controls flames burning at over 5400 degrees Fahrenheit. It casually swims through the sea of lava it creates by melting rock and sand. Although I want to have one myself, but I guess it is better if you capture it. Go says. Sorry about that, but they are said to bring disasters, surely you don't want to have them on your team, right? I chuckle. After getting back to the office, we show Professor Rayfort the last treasure of Ruin's Pokemon. I can't believe you guys just capture this Pokemon while others are preparing for the final exams. I know, but we're confident that we can pass. I say. Anyway, this is Caillou, the Beads of Ruin. Rayfort looks at the Pokemon and says, Beads like these were thought to be sacred and thus were worn during religious rituals. I believe they were most often worn as a single bead on the neck like a pendant, but it seems Caillou has four of them. Professor Rayford is right. Two beads are forming around the Pokemon's one eye, and there are two eyes, so there are four of them. Were the beads worn in pairs, like on the ears and wrists? Or were the rituals perhaps performed by four people? What on earth could have caused beads such as these? originally used to ward off disaster, to become bringers of disaster themselves. She mutters. But that's all four of them. Lily says. We've shown you all of them. Yes, this is simply amazing. You have now reported back to me with all four of the treasures of ruin. I never thought that you would be able to do this much for me. You have my thanks. I would have liked to go looking for the treasures of ruin myself and make them my own. But I suppose it was precise because I sent you someone with a pure heart, that we were able to accomplish this feat. They may be the treasures of my dreams, but I will allow you to have them for now. After bidding farewell to the teacher, we decide to meet up with Go and the others, telling them that I'm going to send the four Pokemon back to my mother so she can use them to fight Team Rocket, and I also tell them the story of my mother. So you said that your mother was actually the Kondo champion Aurora, and she used to work with Team Rocket as an assassin? Go asks. Yeah, I know I didn't tell you guys much about my past, but this is the truth. Team Rocket is also the cause of my father's death, I can't forgive them for what they've done. If these four Pokemon can destroy Team Rocket, then it will be fine for me. I say. Lily says, with the army from the Rota Kingdom, I'm sure that we don't need to get back to Kondo to fight alongside Ash's mother. Okay, well. We'll just leave you guys alone since you probably need to prepare for the final exam, right? Leon asks. Sorry about that, I say as we finally bid farewell to one another and head back to the dorm. So you guys managed to get the final treasure of Ruin Pokemon. Can we actually see it? Riasa asks. Sorry, but they are not with me since they're already with my mother. 
She is going to lead the attack on Team Rocket today, and we can only hope that the operation is a success. I say. Aren't you worried about her? Nimona asks. I mean, your mother would have died in this battle, wouldn't it? Don't worry. I sigh. She already escapes death as much as I do. I'm sure she won't be killed. Besides, I can't go back because I still have the final exams to take. Fair enough. Drandon says. Let's not think about it and get back to study. We nod as we take a seat and start to discuss the subjects that we're taking for exams. Monday. Now today begins the last week of this semester. We have a biology exam and the problems include catching Pokemon, getting new Pokemon, Pokemon evolution, shiny Pokemon chances, and Pokemon forms. And the last question. Let's say that Professor Jack is asking if we like his class since he's still getting used to this teaching thing. Hee hee, I snuck in a little bonus question there right at the end again. Shish, our little secret don't tell the director. This is what Professor Jack says to us after the class is over. I'll grade these right away. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing how you did. After class, I say, now our biology class is over. Indeed, Lily says, six more classes and we'll be able to get to the winter vacation. Tuesday. Professor Time's math class is also in its final exam. The problems include shopping for items, Pokemon move power with critical hits, Pokemon move power with type advantages and disadvantages, stat increases or decreases, and the power multiply after terrestrializing. Some of the questions are tricky enough to fool a lot of students, but it is not that hard for me, I suppose. This test was the culmination of all I taught you, and I'm sure you all did just fine. Time says. Do remember to take a nice break after class. After class, Drandon asks, so there is one question, it says that if a Pokemon uses Swords Dance twice to boost its attack by four stages, then how much damage will its physical moves then do? What is your answer? I say, that was easy. It was the triple damage. Don't tell me you pick double. Of course not, Drandon says, I was just making sure. In Professor Rayfort's final exam, the problems included the Great Crater of Paldia, the foundation of this Nerova University, the treasure of ruined Pokemon, Area Zero Expedition, and the invention of Terra Orbs. All of these questions really help a lot since we promise Professor Sada and Professor Turo that we're going to their secret lab once the semester is over. You must excuse that last question. It is too shallow and ridiculous to be on a history test, but alas, the director forced me to include it. After class, Riasa says, I wonder why the director wants Professor Rayfort to make that final question. I don't know. I mean, how many years ago did Professor Sada and Professor Turo invent Terra Orbs? I think the director wants to put it because he is a part of the team. Lily says, and I'm sure that nobody will get it wrong. Because they are only invented 10 years ago. Wednesday. In Professor Salvatore's language classes, most of the questions are translation questions, and during the middle of the class, he has his Pikachu do some expressions so that we are able to do some of the questions. Whose idea is it to put the observation quizzes inside the exam sheet? And the last question is also the same as the midterm exam, is he seriously think nobody knows our teacher's name? I assume the obligatory dernier question, last question, that is, gave you no trouble. Professor Salvatore says. After the class is over, Lily says, for some reason, I think you can just cheat your way through the observation test. And why is that? I ask. You're an Ori user, you can just read the Pokemon's mind. Lily says, but you didn't do it, right? Of course, cheating is bad, and besides, I'm already cheating because Pikachu has been my partner since the very beginning. I say as I rub my Pikachu's ear. Right, it will be funny to see if you get the answers wrong. Nimona says. In Professor Dendra's Battle Studies class, the problems included the cheers used in Terra Raid battles, auto battles, gaining LPs, the levels adjustment in the Link battles, and the rules of the Link battles. I saw you giving it everything you've got. I'm sure you'll all get perfect scores. Dendra says. You all did so well in my class. If you pass this test, you'll officially be battle masters. After class, we decide to take a rest. And Riasa asks, so still not answer from your mother. I shake my head and say, no, maybe she's still fighting against Team Rocket. But recently, 
I didn't see those three from Team Rocket annoying us. Well, thanks to Director Clavel, they are forbidden to enter the school grounds, and I'm pretty sure that their boss would want to call them back to Kondo since we're attacking them. Lily says. I hope what you're thinking is right, and if this is over, we won't need to deal with them anymore. I say with a smile. Thursday, Professor Hassel's art class is also having its final exam. The problems included the restaurant that can change a Pokemon's terotype, Brassius artworks and their meanings, the ten sites of Paldia, and the marks and ribbons of the Pokemon. Thank you all so much for learning about art with me, Hassel says. The time we shared has left a mark that I will treasure, I promise you. And it is my sincere wish that all of you go on to even greater, prosperous futures. After class, Lily and I are stopped by Professor Hassel, he asks, so Ash and Lily. Since you two have eight gym badges already, I was wondering when you're going to challenge the Pokemon League. I say, it will be very soon, I guess, since we are still training and we really want to become the champion rank trainers like Nimona. I see, well, I'm pretty sure that you've met all of the Elite Four members, I'm sure that every one of them will be happy to take you two on. Hassel says with a smile. Wait, do we meet all of the Elite Four members? I mean, there is Rika, Poppy, and Hassel, but who's the fourth one? And how come I met them? After classes, we also decide to visit Nurse Miriam, she has been preparing for her certification exam these few weeks, and when we decide to greet her, she tells us that she passes the exam and is going to become the health teacher in the next semester. She also says that it is because of our encouragement that she is able to pass the test, and she wants to give us 10 max revives as rewards. Friday, we're having our final test with Professor Sawaro's home education class. The problems include meal powers, Pokemon picnicking, and outfits and styles. After the test is over, Professor Sawaro says, I, made the questions a little easier than I'd planned to, as a way of saying thank you for informing me about Rotom phone cases. I trust that you all gave this exam everything you had so that you will not have to retake it. After we go to the school hall, we get to see the scores, like usual, Lily and I get full of scores, so we get 35 express. Candy's M is rewards, and with Director Clavel's awards, we also gain 5 more express. Candy's L. Time flies really fast, Nimona says, and this semester is already over. You're right, I say, although I need to call my mother and ask about the news, it has been five days since she begins the Team Rocket raid. As I dial the phone number on the Rotom phone, my mother finally shows up in front of us. But much to my horror, she has stitches on her forehead. Mom, are you alright? What happened to your head? I ask with horror. Oh, don't worry. It was just a scratch. My mom says to me with a smile. Anyway, thank you for the help of the four ruinous Pokemon, Team Rocket is finally over. This causes Lily and I to jump for joy, and I ask, and what about Giovanni, or the other Team Rocket grunts? Giovanni is dead, along with some of the executive Team Rocket members. My mom says, we only lose 10 members of the International Police and Rota Army combined and the rest of the Team Rocket members are arrested. I see, I'm actually happy that the leader of Team Rocket is dead, and my father is avenged, there is nothing happier than this. But what about Jesse, James, and Meowth? My mom is confused, and she asks, I've never seen them back in Kanto. Why did you ask? That means those three are still out there, trying to capture my Pikachu so that they can give it to their dead boss but I'm pretty sure that every time we bring them into prison, they will always escape no matter what. That means those three are still in the Paldia region, I say, and they might be near us as well. What are we going to do then? Lily asks, I'm sorry that it has to be done like this. My mother frowns, but you have to kill them and not leave them alive. I'm pretty sure they won't change no matter how you try to persuade them. Trying to kill them, huh? Killing is not that easy but is this the only way? After my mother ends the call, Nimona asks, hold on, Ash, does that mean you have killed someone before? This causes my friends to look at me with a weird faces, and Lily is showing concern. I say, I only kill when I was ordered to, not because I want to. Drandon says, ordered to. You mean like your mother or the international police? Yeah, and it seems I'm going to kill those three, 
If anything, I think those three deserve it. I say. When we get outside, we decide to wait for Team Rocket to show up and take my Pikachu, that way I can finally do the kill. And just when they show up with their stupid motto and a net that captures Pikachu, saying that it is electricity proof, I smirk and say, so what if you take my Pikachu? Your boss is already dead thanks to the treasure of ruins that he asks you to get. This causes the trio to be surprised, and Jesse mocks, if you think you're going to lie to us, try again. James tries to call the boss, but there is no one answer, and James says, um. I don't think the twerp is lying. You know what? I've already have enough of you guys stealing my Pikachu for eight and a half years. I say as I take out the knife, slashing the net and freeing Pikachu. You have two choices, you'll leave us alone and never bother us again, or I'm going to end your life here. End our life. Jesse, being the stupid one, mocks me, but I smirk as I put the knife at her neck. My mother is Aurora, just so you know. She used to be Team Rocket's best assassin. Now the others are terrified and James yells, we will leave you alone. We promise. Good, I say as I let them go, and they all run away like scaredy cats. Nimona says, so you're just going to spare them. I still couldn't bring myself to kill them. That's why I'm going to give them a chance. If they seem to follow us again, I will not hesitate this time. Fair enough, Lily says. Anyway, let's celebrate the end of the semester. Let's go. Nimona cheers as we all go back to our dorm. After celebrating, the next day, we're heading to Arvin's lab so we can meet Professor Sada and Professor Turo. Arvin is already waiting for us there, we're glad that he's patient with us because we're preparing for the exams. I see you did come. Arvin sighs. Well, this is the lab. I used to come here to play all the time when I was a kid. There'd better be a good reason for calling us here like this. Arvin opens the door and says, Everyone always says, they're some kind of geniuses. Absolutely brilliant as Pokemon professors. My parents, that is. But let me tell you, as parents, they're the worst. All they ever do is work. They never come home. I don't have a single memory of them ever even playing with me, their own kid. Mabostiff's the only one who was there for me. Always. Now all six of us are angry at Professor Sada and Turo, they sound even worse than Lily's parents. When we step inside, I ask, Arvin, you're not coming in. I just want to get this over with. Arvin says as reluctantly comes in with us. Inside, we notice a lot of books and devices. But the room is also dark. Just then, the screen turns on randomly and both Professor Sada and Turo are on it. We need your help, Sada says. Help with what? Lily asks, still disappointed at them for leaving their child like that. We are currently at the deepest point of Area Zero, in the Great Crater of Paldia. Professor Turo says. Wait, what? We are shocked as we already heard from Professor Rayford about how dangerous that place is. We have been researching the unique Pokemon here for a very long time. Professor Sada says. We're asking all of you to lend a hand, to help carry out the final step of the great Professor Sada and Turo's glorious research. Wait. Why are they referring to themselves as the third point of view? Arvin asks, the final step. But there is something we need first. Something that can be found within that lab. Professor Turo says, what we need, is the Scarvio book. Wait, do you mean this book? Arvin asks while taking out the book. Ah, so you took it from the lab, did you, Arvin? Professor Sada asks, that expedites things. Bring the Scarvio book to the deepest depths of Area Zero. We promise that it will be an experience worth treasuring if you come. I must note, however, that Area Zero is both home to vicious Pokemon and outfitted with powerful cybernetic security systems. Professor Turo says, It seems to me that you might struggle if the three of you were to enter alone. You may take the time to gather some reliable allies before you come if you feel the need. We'll be awaiting you in the deepest part of Area Zero, whenever you arrive. If you think you three are going alone, think again. Drandon says after the professors end their call. Yeah, I want to see what Area Zero looks like as well. Riasa says. Me too. Luke says. Area Zero. That place is bad news. Arvin says. It was down in Area Zero that Mabostif got wounded in the first place. Down in the Great Crater of Paldia. In honesty, 
I'd be perfectly happy to never see that place again. Are you gonna go? Of course, we're going to go. Don't you want to see your mother and father in person? Lily asks. I suppose they did ask. Arvin sighs. And I can't just stand by and watch while a friend heads off into danger on their own. So I guess I'm going, too. Sides, I'd love to give my parents a piece of my mind. We're delighted, and he continues, all right then, Ash, Lily. Outside, we're gonna have a Pokemon battle to see if we're really ready to head into Area Zero or not. Mostly to see if I'm ready or not. Let's go. Once we get outside of the lab, Arvin says, all right. You ready for a battle, Ash, Lily? Lily says, so we're battling you, then I'll do the battle if that's fine. Not at all, I say, excellent, you're ready too, right, Mabostif? Mabostif nods at him, yep, Mabostif says he's ready. Wait, you're battling with Mabostif? I ask with confusion. Okay, yeah, I can see why you'd be worried. But my buddy here's bursting with energy. You'd never know he was so weak just a little while ago. Won't leave me alone, always whining at me, wanting to battle you and your Pokemon. It's been so long that I nearly forgot, but he always did love to battle. Even if we always lost to that student council girl, the battle fanatic won. You do know I'm here, right? Nimona glares at him, battle fanatic, just because I like battles doesn't make me a fanatic. Well, you're kinda fanatic, to be honest. Drandon says, only to be sent a glare by Nimona. Anyway, my point is there's no need to worry. We're a brand new Arvin and Mabostif. And we're feeling audacious, or maybe herbaceous. Let me give you a taste of what we can do. His first Pokemon is Greedent, and Lily decides to use Great Tusk to battle. The Pokemon that I met during our hunt for the Herba Mystica are all stars, every one of them. Then I'm going to do the same thing, I'll be sending the Titans to battle. Lily says with a smile. Great Tusk, let's start with Brick Break. Great Tusk goes for the attack, and Arvin has Greedent dodges and uses Bullet Seed, which is super effective. Then Greedent goes for Headlong Rush, hitting the Pokemon, but lowering its defense and special defense stats. Psychic Fangs, Arvin yells, and Greedent tries to attack Greedent, but it is stopped when Great Tusk uses Bulldoze. In the end, Greedent is defeated by another Brick Break. Cloister, you're next. Arvin sends out his cloister next, and I sigh, this is a bad matchup for Lily, especially since Great Tusk's defenses are dropped. And Cloister uses Icicle Spear to defeat the Great Tusk, so Lily goes for Cloth next. Use Rock Slide. When Cloister is going for liquidation, the attack causes the Pokemon to flinch. Cloister decides to set up the light screen, but Cloth uses Rock Smash to lower its defense. Use liquidation again. Arvin yells, and Cloister's attack manages to hit Cloth. But Cloth's stats are raised because of Angry Shell's ability, and it goes for Guillotine, knocking the Cloister with the one hit Ko. The third Pokemon for Arvin is Scovillain, when it uses Zen Headbutt on Cloth. Lily has Cloth uses Protect and Land another Rock Slide, dealing a lot of damage, but Scovillain's Energy Ball knocks the Pokemon out in the end. Tatsugiri. You're next. When Lily sends out the curly form, Reisa says, Really? Using Tatsugiri to battle? Tatsugiri uses muddy water to deal some damage to Scovillain, but Scovillain goes for crunch, and Tatsugiri barely dodges the attack. Energy Ball. Lily has Tatsugiri take the hit, much to everyone's confusion. Tatsugiri is now having its red bar of HP, and Lily smirks, That was one of your mistake. Mirror Coat. This guy can use Mirror Coat and I see that Scovillain is defeated with just one move. That mirror code caught me off guard, Nimona says, but that is also smart. I agree. I say. Arvin's fourth Pokemon is Toadscrew. It uses Spore to make Tatsugiri fall asleep and finishes it with Sludge Bomb. Lily goes for her fourth Pokemon, which is Bombardier. Dual Wingbeat. Bombardier uses the attack on Toadscrew, and then Toadscrew uses Spore to make Bombardier fall asleep. The ability Mycelium might is also troublesome, I mutter. And after taking Sludge Bomb and Power Whip, Bombardier finally wakes up, and it goes for the Rock Slide to make Toadscrew flinch, and finishes with another dual wingbeat. Garganical, come out and help me. Arvin's fifth Pokemon is the Rock-type Pokemon, and it goes for Stone Edge to defeat Bombardier. 
Orthworm. Lily sends the giant worm out as the fifth Pokemon, but thanks to the Earth Eater ability, Earthquake manages to heal the damage from Garganicle's body press. Use Iron Head. Lily has Orthworm use the attack, and it makes the rock type flinch. Then Garganicle is defeated with Orthworm using Earthquake this time. Maybostiff. You're up. Arvin says as the dog finally shows up. Then he says, Let's celebrate your full recovery with a glow up. Time to terrestrialize, Maybostiff. We gulp as we see that the Maybostiff has a dark type of terrestrialization in his head, and with just a crunch, it knocks out Orthworm. Snowy. You're my last hope. Lily sends out her Alolan Vulpix as the last Pokemon. Then she also terrestrializes her Pokemon to become fairy type. Use Fire Fang. Arvin yells, but Snowy goes for Dazzling Gleam to blind the Pokemon, and it goes for Blizzard from behind, hitting the Pokemon. Play Rough. Maybostiff finally hits Snowy, causing it to yelp in pain, but Lily has Snowy use Sheer Cold, and Maybostiff is defeated with just one move. We were so close, Maybostiff, so close, but, Lily. Thanks. Little buddy. Arvin sighs as he heals up his Maybostiff. Dang. This is the strength of someone who could take down those Titan Pokemon, huh? Yeah, much as I hate to admit it. I do think we're gonna need some more support. The Pokemon in Area Zero are super strong, and there are all sorts of weird machines there, too. I'd say we need at least two more people. Somebody with some champion rank level skills and somebody who can deal with crazy tech. We already have Nimona who is going to come with us, right? I ask. I'm still thinking about it. To be honest, Nimona says. Just give me some time to think. And there is Penny, I think she can help us if we ask her, Lily says. Huh? Never knew we had someone all tech savvy like that at school. But I doubt someone with those skills would bother helping us out unless she owed us. But, well, we've gotta do what we've gotta do. Whoever you think could be a help. Just try getting in good with him. We'll see if we can't get a team together. Get in touch if you make progress, I'll do the same. I see. I say with a nod. Then after Arvin leaves, I ask Nimona, why are you hesitating to come with us? I'm sorry, but I was just worried about the danger in Area Zero. Of course, I want to battle strong Pokemon. Nimona says. Then how about this? If the two of you manage to get into the champion rank, I might consider going with you. Sure, we're going to do that anyway, but still, there is also Penny that we need to ask. But I think we'll meet her this night since that is also when Cassiopeia asks to meet us. Oh yeah. Luke says. Cassiopeia's true form. I wonder who she is. We already have a feeling who she is, and that's why we decide to head back to school to wait for night time. That night, the six of us are heading to the courtyard where Cassiopeia is waiting, and just before we're getting there, we find Clive standing in front of the school gate waiting for us. Sup, guys. Clive says. Clive? I ask, since we're in a public area, and I'm sure there are still a few students around. He probably doesn't want to reveal his true identity to us. Yup. That's my name. Actually, no it's time for me to bring this little performance to an end. Allow me to reveal my true identity. Then Clive takes off his wig and his jacket revealing himself as Director Clavel we knew. I do apologize for deceiving you with my disguise. In truth, the boy you knew as Clive was none other than the director of Nariuva University. Mr. Clavel. Yeah, we already know that. Lily sighs, as we all nod. I thought my disguise was perfect, but then again, you guys are also sharp. Clavel says, regardless, there is still one more astonishing truth I must reveal to you. The true identity of Cassiopeia, the big boss of Team Star, was M.E. all along. Now, this causes the six of us to get surprised. Director Clavel is the boss of Team Star. This is not true, right? But if he's not Cassiopeia, why would he lie about it? Honest to goodness. When you heard Cassiopeia over the phone, that was actually a pre-recorded voice, Clavel says. No, that is definitely not a recorded voice, and it is also a good thing that not every one of us is buying this lie. I pulled it off using, er, you know, one of those. High-tech gizmos, oh yes, it was very clever, Director Clavel says. Just great, that just gives away that he is not Cassiopeia. He is making everything up, but the only question in our minds is why. So Master Ash and Miss Lily, now you know I'm the big boss. 
that means there is just one thing left to do. Face me in one final showdown to decide it all. Then he sends out a rangaroo in front of the schoolyard. Nimona says, is it really it? I mean, Director Clavel really is Cassiopeia? Of course, I'm not believing this whole thing. But one thing is for sure, we're going to battle the director right here right now. I say, Lily, Cassiopeia's battle goes to you, I'll battle director Clavel here. Me? Lily is surprised as I give her the role, and I send out Kingambit, ready to battle the director. I am Cassiopeia of Team Star. With this battle, I will finally bring Operation Starfall to an end, director Clavel says. Let's set up with Reflect. Orangaroo goes for the shield to lower the damage of physical attacks, and I yell, Kingambit. Kowtow cleave. I have Kingambit slash at the Orangaroo, dealing some damage to it. But Orangaroo uses Yawn, causing Kingambit to get sleepy. Kingambit. Night slash. I have the Pokemon slash at the Pokemon, and knock the Pokemon out in the end. But Kingambit also falls asleep, much to our dismay. The next Pokemon for Director Clavel is Houndoom and it keeps using Thunder Fang and Fire Blast while Kingambit is sleeping, defeating the Pokemon in the end. Doxbun. I need your help. Sending out the Pokemon is quite risky, but I'm betting it because of its ability Well-Baked Body. Houndoom uses Sludge Bomb, and it deals a lot of damage to Doxbun, but Doxbun goes for the play rough, dealing a lot of damage, and then it goes for Mudshot, defeating Doxbun in the end. So far so good. Ash has defeated Director Clavel's two Pokemon, Luke says. But still, isn't it against the rules to battle here in front of the school? Why would he do such a thing? Raisa asks. Let's just hope that none of the teachers or students are reporting this to the chairwoman of the school board, Nimona says. The third Pokemon for Director Clavel is Abomasnow. This Pokemon immediately sets up the snow with the snow warning ability, and it goes for Wood Hammer, knocking out my Dox Bun in the end. Armourouge. I choose you. My third Pokemon is a fire type, and I intend to make it an easy battle. Abomasnow sets up Aurora Veil and raises the defenses. Use Armor Cannon, and much to my dismay, the attack doesn't finish the Pokemon off, and it manages to land a Woodhammer on my Pokemon, dealing a lot of damage. But the good thing about it is that Abomasnow is eventually defeated by the recoil damage. Aurora Veil sure is troublesome. Lily says but it is also a good thing that Abomasnow is down. The fourth Pokemon for Director Clavel is Pultiagist, it goes for a Sucker Punch, dealing a lot of damage to Armourouge, but Armourouge is still standing and it goes for Psyshock, trying to deal as much damage as it can before it is knocked out by the Shadow Ball. Looks like the weather effect is gone, Nimona says as the hail stops. But I wonder how Ash will deal with Pultiagist, Lily says with concern. Annihilate. I choose you. I decide to take the risk and send out a ghost type Pokemon. Pultiagist goes for the Shell Smash, lowering the defenses but raising the other stats, and it goes for Will O Wisp to make Annihilate burned. Use Rage Fist. Annihilate throws fists at the Pultiagist, and after several hits, the Pokemon is also knocked out. The fifth Pokemon is Amoongus, and since my Annihilate is burned, it immediately goes for the move Hex. I have Annihilate goes for Outrage, but after striking a lot of damage, it is still defeated because of the confusion in Amoongus's Giga Drain. Revavroom. I choose you. My fifth Pokemon is Revavroom, and Amoongus tries to use Spore to make this Pokemon fall asleep. Not only that, it continues to attack with Hex. But when Revavroom wakes up, I have it use Zen Headbutt and Overheat, knocking the Amoongus out. Hey. To think that I, Cassiopeia, would be backed into a corner like this. Director Clavel says, and we are still not going to believe it. His final Pokemon is Quaquaval, the water type final evolution of the starter Pokemon in Paldia. Aqua Step, Director Clavel says, and Quaquaval raises its speed and attacks Revavroom with full power. I have Revavroom use Zen Headbutt, but the damage is not enough, as Quaquaval defeats Revavroom with Brick Break. Pikachu, you're my final hope, I say as I send out my final Pokemon. Very well. It seems I shall have to terrestrialize my Pokemon. Director Clavel says as he terrestrialize his Quaquaval, making it pure water type. I'll do the same thing. I also use the Terra Orb, and Pikachu becomes a dragon type this time. A dragon type Pikachu, Drandon says, not really ideal against a water type, but Aqua Step is not going to deal a lot of damage to Pikachu now. 
Ice Spinner. I wasn't expecting that Quaquaval has an ice type move, and it deals a lot of damage to Pikachu. Pikachu. Use Thunderbolt. Pikachu jumps into the air and fires the electric attack, but Quaquaval dodges the attack with quick speed. It goes for Aerial Ace, striking Pikachu time after time, but I have Pikachu use Draco Meteor, finishing the Quaquaval once and for all. How strong you have grown. Director Clavel says with a smile before recalling his Pokemon. Well now, Master Ash. It seems you have grown quite splendidly over the course of your treasure hunt. Okay, Director Clavel. Why did you lie to us? You're not Cassiopeia, right? I ask. And here, once again, I must apologize, though Clive and myself being the same person was no lie, mind you. Cassiopeia's true identity remains hidden. But I believe I can hazard a guess as to who they may be. Clavel says. That's why I sought to spare you from having to confront them in battle. Their sorrows. Should not be yours to bear. But we have to, all of them used to be our friends. Lily says. No, it is not just us, but my brother and Asha's sister as well. Indeed. We're doing this for them as well, it is not just our selfish reasons, I say. I see. However, Cassiopeia has settled on a course of action and is determined to see it through. I do not imagine any ordinary student could hope to stand against them and win. So I challenge you to a battle to test your skill. If you had lost, it would have fallen to me to bring down Cassiopeia. Such was my resolve. But it turns out you are as strong as you were kind. If anyone has a chance at saving that poor child, it is surely you. We nod, so this is why the director wants to battle us. As an educator, it shames me to burden one of my students with such a task. Much to our surprise, Director Clavel bows to me, but please. Defeat Cassiopeia, take on the big boss of Team Star and win. Of course, sir. I say, we will end Team Star. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. I leave this in your hands. Director Clavel nods, but much to our surprise, Professor Time has been standing behind Director Clavel and she doesn't seem to be happy. You there, what do you think you're doing? Professor Time asks. We realize that Professor Time must have found out about the battle. I wonder who was the one that gave away the battle to her and have her rush here to scold us. Ah, Ms. Time, a pleasure to see you, Director Clavel says. It's no pleasure at all, Mr. Clavel. I come here to investigate reports of an illicit battle on school grounds, and what do I find? Why, the director of the university himself. Facing of against one of our students, no less. What were you thinking? Ah, no, if I could just explain. You see, it is a rather sad tale. Now Director Clavel is sweating. Never know that he's scared of Professor Time. Oh, spare me. Your excuses reek worse than a stunkies behind. Professor Time continues to glare at him. A stunkies BB behind? Clavel asks with shock, ahem. He turns to us, remember, the big boss asked us to meet them in the schoolyard after dark. I'm counting on you. You'll write a letter of apology to the students and faculty at once, and I'll be reporting this to the chairwoman of the school board, make no mistake, Professor Time then leaves. Good gracious, no, a anything but that, I implore you. Director Clavel chases after her, and we are all sweat dropping. Nimona says, never knew Director Clavel was acting like that. Yeah. But Lily, just like I said, the battle with Cassiopeia is in your hands. I say. My Pokemon is already tired and I'm sure that you can handle her in the end. Ash. She is probably touched at how much I trust her with the upcoming battle that determines the fate of Team Star, she says, you're right. I can't lose, I will do it. I smile at her before we all head to the courtyard, waiting for Cassiopeia to show up. When we finally arrive at the courtyard, the six of us are waiting until Penny shows up. She's covering her face with her hoodie and mutters, Ash, Lily. Guys. Thanks for coming. Penny, why are you covering your hair like that? I ask with confusion. Oh, sorry. She takes off the hoodie and stares at us, and much to our surprise, she's showing us an evil grin. I don't like that face. Drandon mutters. Penny? Nimona asks. Lily says, or should we say, Cassiopeia? The big boss of Team Star? Hey. This must be quite a shock for you, Penny says. The big boss. Cassiopeia, they were both me all along. Not at all, we have suspicions and we're right all this time. 
Lily sighs. But why are you trying to disband your own team? When I saw you make quick work of those Team Star lackeys outside school that time, the idea for Operation Starfall suddenly came to me. My skills let me get hold of as much LP as I want, so I decided to use that to tempt you into helping me out, Penny says. Well, we didn't help because of the amount of LP. I sigh. We only help because we want to stop Team Star from doing something they might regret in the future. After the operation started, I kept an eye on you guys as a member of the supply unit, and I had you battle the bosses on my behalf. All for the goal of defeating me and putting an end to Team Star once and for all, Penny says. If that's the case, why did she still want to fight us? And the good thing is that the answer is going to be revealed to us right now. But still, there's a part of me that wants Team Star to live on. I can't just roll over and let you win without putting up a fight. This is the final showdown. Are you ready? Bring it on, I'll fight you, Lily says. Thanks, Penny says. And at the same time, Clive arrives at the scene. Sorry to keep you. The letter of apology Ms. Time had me. Air. I mean, preparations took longer than expected. Penny stares at Clive and asks, That voice, are you Clive? Penny. So it was you after, ah. Uh, no, I mean. Is that you, Cassiopeia? Clive asks, trying to be shocked. In the flesh. I've a task for you, Clive, if you'll accept it. Penny says. I want you to record what happens next so I can send the video to Team Star. They need to see the outcome of this battle for themselves. Oh okay, we'll do. Clive says as he takes out the Rotom phone, preparing to record the battle. Lily and Penny are standing at both sides, and Penny says, then allow me to introduce myself properly. I'm the big boss of Team Star. The name's Cassiopeia No. Penny. Now, bow down before the overwhelming might of Team Star's founder. She throws the Pokeball and sends out Umbreon. Lily says, bring it on, Flamigo, come on out. Lily sends out the first Pokemon, and Penny says, I won't hold back in this battle, I'll stay true to Team Star's code. Let's start with quick attack. Umbreon fights against Flamigo with the quick attack, but Flamigo dodges and goes for low kick, slamming it to the ground. Use Psychic. Flamigo is hit by the attack. It might be able to withstand it, but its special defense is also dropped. Roost. Lily has Flamigo heals itself, and then it goes for Mega Kick, which has been weakened by Baby Doll Eyes, but then it goes for another low kick to defeat the Pokemon. When Penny sends out her next Pokemon, it is actually a Vaporeon. Luke say, wait, does that mean Penny's team is filled with evolutions? Drandon says, there are a total of eight evolutions and an Eevee. It might be six of those nine. Reminds me of Virgil. I say with a nod. Vaporeon uses Aurora Beam and defeats Flamigo, so Lily goes for Toadscrew next. The Aurora Beam from Vaporeon deals a lot of damage and immediately sends Toadscrew into the red zone of HP. But Toadscrew uses Spore, causing Vaporeon to fall asleep. Oh no. Penny gasps in shock, and Lily quickly has it use Giga Drain using the Pokemon to recover its HP, and once its HP is back, it goes for Power Whip, knocking out the Toadscrew. The third Pokemon is Flareon, which immediately traps Toadscrew into the Fire Spin, with the damage continuously taken, Toadscrew still manages to take the Earth Power hit. Flare Blitz. Penny yells, and the Flareon uses the attack to knock out Toadscrew before it can do anything. You're quite strong with those evolutions, however, I don't intend on losing. Backscalibur, Lily sends out the Ice Dragon Pokemon, which seems to be a weird choice. But just as the Flare Blitz hits the Pokemon, the attack stat is boosted thanks to the Thermal Exchange ability. Use Glaive Rush. Lily bets everything from the attack and it just knocks out Flareon with one move. The fourth Pokemon for Penny is Jolteon. Jolteon goes for Pin Missile, and because of the Glaive Rush's side effect, Backscalibur takes a lot of damage. It goes for Dragon Claw but Jolteon dodges with quick attack, striking the enemy with full force. Baby Doll Eyes Jolteon uses the eyes to lower the Pokemon's attack stat, and I say, looks like all of his evolutions have Baby Doll Eyes. Which is not good. Nimona says. And Baxcalibur goes for Icicle Crash, which manages to hurt Jolteon a lot, but Jolteon defeats the Pokemon with Thunder and Pin Missile. Clodsire Lily goes for the Clodsire to battle and it goes for Earthquake, which deals some damage to Jolteon. 
Jolteon tries to strike Claude Sire with quick attack, but the ability Poison Point causes the Jolteon to be poisoned. Oh no! Penny gasps. Now let's see you can take this poison jab, Lily says, and Claude Sire jabs at the Pokemon, causing Jolteon to groan in pain, and Jolteon is defeated by the poison effect. The fifth Pokemon for Penny is Leafeon, and it goes for Baby Doll Eyes as well to lower Claude Sire's attack stats. It also manages to dodge the poison jab and goes for Leaf Blade. Despite getting poisoned in the process, Claude Sire is defeated by the constant Leaf Blades. Lily goes for Snowy to battle, and Snowy sets up the hail so it can go with the Aurora Veil, boosting the defenses, and Leafeon goes for X Scissor, dealing a lot of damage to Snowy, but Snowy uses Grudge to lower the PP of that move. Use Blizzard. Lily commands Snowy, and it goes for the Ice type attack to freeze Leafeon defeating it with dazzling gleam in the end i can't fault you on your battle skills at all no wonder the bosses fell at your hands penny says as she sends out the final pokemon which is sylveon snowy goes for blizzard again but sylveon dodges the attack and goes for the moonblast damaging a lot to snowy when the aurora veil fades sylveon throws a lot of shadow ball at snowy knocking it out of battle snowy Lily yells in horror as she picks up the white fox, bringing it to me. Don't worry, Lily. I know you can do it. Lily nods as she walks back to the field and sends out the final Pokemon, Tinkaton. Time to terrestrialize. Shine bright like the starry sky and become who you really want to be. Penny takes out the Terra Orb and puts it on Sylveon. Even though it is still fairy, it is stronger. We'll do the same thing, Lily says as she takes out the Terra Orb putting it on Tinkaton and it becomes a steel type. Gigaton Hammer. Lily commands, and the move deals a lot of damage to Sylveon. Sylveon goes for baby doll eyes and quick attack, but it doesn't seem to do a lot of damage to Tinkaton, and Tinkaton does flash cannon, and Sylveon is finally defeated. Penny recalls her Sylveon and turns away a little. It's all over now. Nice job. Lily pets her and we all turn to Penny. It's finally over, guys. It's done. Thanks for everything, guys. And you too, Clive. I'm glad I could see this through to the end. Clive nods. I guess this is it for Team Star, and me, too, Penny says. Hold that thought, miss. Ah, uh, Penny, I'd like to check something with you first, Clive says. Check what? Penny asks. Why resort to something like Operation Starfall if you're the big boss of Team Star? Clive asks. Wasn't there any other way to handle this? I tried telling the boss that we were done once before, but they still didn't quit. Penny frowns. Why not simply order them to? Riasa asks. I mean, you're the big boss, so surely you can just order them, right? Our code states that no one in the team has the right to order people around. I could ask them all to do stuff, but I could never order them. Penny says. So, it's back to the code once again. The bosses must have taken it very seriously, Clive says. They did. That's why I knew I could use it to force Team Star to disband. Penny says. Because the bosses would do anything the code required of them. Even leave the team, I ask. Yes. And according to the code, they had to accept any challenge made to them. Penny says. Thus the idea of Operation Starfall, Clive says. Cassiopeia, let me ask you one last thing. What does Team Star? No, what do your friends in the team mean to you? Penny thinks for a while before muttering, There. They're my greatest treasure. Clive sighs and says, Splendid. Thank you for apprising me of the situation, Miss Penny. Wah. Penny is surprised at the sudden tone, and we think that Penny is going to get who Clive really is. Now, young lady, there's something I should very much like to discuss with you. Clive walks to her. Hey. Quit it with the old geezer act, Clive. You're creeping me out. Penny is a little scared. Indeed. Well then, before we talk further, allow me to reveal to you my own secret identity. Clive says, ha ha. He takes off the disguise just like he did back at the school gates to us, and Penny gasps, D Director Clavel. Just as Cassiopeia was your disguise, the boy you knew as Clive was mine. Clavel says, but, but why? Penny asks, I needed a way to talk to Team Star on equal terms. Clavel says, students do tend to shy from speaking their mind to their teachers, after all. 
much more so when faced with the director of the university. Yeah, but, where do I even start? Wasn't the outfit a bit much? Penny asks. Plus, I have some big feelings about that wig. You have no idea, Nimona says as we also chuckle a little. Ahem. Well, that's quite enough of that for now. Everyone, why don't you come on out? Just then, much to our shock, Giacomo, Mela, Atticus, Ortega, and Ari are now walking towards us. A few months ago, Operation Star is a success, and all of my members get their revenge against their bullies in the end. But the plan backfired. Those bullies decide to drop out of school, with their parents got angry at the staff, and people in the class started to be scared of Team Star, afraid that they were the next victims. Not only that, but all of us also got expulsion warnings. Did I really want this? Is this what I want to do to achieve? I think. The reason I wanted to form Team Star is that I want to help bullied students. When I was still in the Galar region, I suffered bullying in school and none of the teaching staff cared to help. That's why after I came to Narova University, I tried to do this to help them out. We're done here. I think we should call it quits. It was the night before I head to the director's office, and I decided to talk to all five of the bosses of Team Star. Hold up. Are you saying we should break up the team? Giacomo asks with shock. You gotta be joking. We got carried away with Operation Star. Now everything's gotten out of hand. I say. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you round up a bunch of bullies in the courtyard and make a show of learning them some manners. Mela says. But we didn't even fight them in the end. We didn't do anything wrong. Ares says. Indeed. Merely did we declare our intention to battle tooth and nail should the villains persist in their tyrannous oppression. Twas a bloodless victory, we assure you. Yeah, they didn't even send out their Pokemon. They just blubbered and apologized a whole lot. Our outfits must have spooked them good. Ortega says. But the bullies made a huge stink about what went down and then they all ended up leaving the university. Our plan backfired epically, there's no way we're getting off scot-free. I guess you're right, this little stunt might have put us up the creek. Giacomo says. I'll fix this mess on my end. Just leave it to me. I say. What are you saying? Mela gasps. I'm the one who started Team Star. I dragged you all into this. I say. So I'll take responsibility for everything. Oh. Noble and kind big boss. You cannot. Atticus is cut off by me. Now that the bullies are gone, you guys should start going to school again. Oh yeah, and what about you? Mela asks. I can't go back. I frown. Why? There's no reason for you to stay shut in your room anymore, right? Giacomo asks. All I can say to you guys is, thanks. I frown. Even though we never met in person, you were all so kind to me. Stop right there, BB. Why are you talking like we'll never speak again? Ari asks. I need to go take care of some things. I say. Prithee, speak to us. What is thine intent? Atticus asks. I decided to stay silent, and Ortega says, Hey, big boss. Answer us. The truth is, I was standing outside of the window where the five of them are, and I mutter, Bye bye, guys. Thanks for everything. Then I end the call and leave, knowing that they should be fine if I do this. I decided to go to the director's office, telling Mr. Harrington that I was the one who did this, and hoping that the teaching staff would spare the rest of Team Star. He agreed with my request, and in exchange, I was forced to leave the school and back to Galar for 18 months, he would tell my friends that I was heading, overseas study. I accept the request in the end. After 18 months of rest, I decide to come back to school. I was horrified that Team Star is still going on, and two of them are trying to get me into Team Star. If only they know who their big boss is. And it is then that a boy comes to my aid. I recognize him as Ash Ketchum, the world monarch, but what is he doing here? Is he going to Narova University just like me? After that incident, I think I have an idea. If Ash Ketchum and his friends can help me stop Team Star, that would be better since I don't think any of the leaders will be able to defeat him. That's why I decide to hack into his phone number and call him about Operation Starfall. Yo, big boss, long time no see. Giacomo greets me after my battle against Lily in the courtyard. I was still shocked that all five of them are here. Ash and the others are probably having the same surprise as me. 
Momo. I mutter. More like. Long time no meet, right? I mean, we only found out your real name just now. Mela says. Meli. Verily is thy long hidden countenance a sight for sore eyes, my lady. Atticus says. Atticus. So, um, I heard your real name's Penny. How've you been this whole time? Ortega asks. Orti, we found you at last. You've no idea how worried we've been. Ari says. Ari, I still can't believe what is going on here. Okay, gang, on the count of three. One, two, Giacomo says. Hasta la vista, Cassiopeia. And hello, Penny. They all yell in unison while doing our star-shaped pose, and tears start to come out of my eyes. Now then, Miss Penny, and each of you young bosses, as well. Director Clavel says, On behalf of the university, I have something I would like to say to Team Star. Just then, much to everyone's surprise, Director Clavel is bowing to us. You all have, my sincerest apologies. Come again, I was too shocked and these are the words that come from my mouth. As director of the university, I let you down. My handling of your situation was a dismal failure. Director Clavel says to me. Wah, I still don't. I mean, why? I ask with confusion. You all told me about your reasons for forming Team Star and about your subsequent actions. Ever since my first days as a director, all I've ever experienced at the university is an environment blessedly free from bullying. But I now know this piece was built on the backs of your hurt and anger and, of course, your immense courage in putting things to right. And so, I'll get straight to the conclusion. I can see that the five bosses are tensed up, and I was also worried about them. The university's order for Team Star to disband and my threat to expel those who did not obey, dot are hereby revoked. We can't believe what we're hearing, and Ash and his group are also showing their surprises. Does that mean what I think it means? Giacomo asks. Indeed. Team Star can continue to exist, should that be your wish? Director Clavel says. And just then, all five of the bosses rush towards me and give me a big group hug, Ari says, woohoo. Penny, isn't this great? Now we can all stay together. Oh, mine heart is giddy with glee. Atticus adds. B but, I betrayed all of you. I mutter. You mean Operation Starfall? Director Clavel told us all about it. Ortega says. Far as we heard, you only went through with it to save us from getting expelled. Giacomo says, you were just worried about us, right? Not like we'd ever chuck the team just cause someone told us to, after all. Ain't our style, Mela says. I cannot even begin to imagine how you must have feared for us, Lady Penny. Atticus says to me, sorry for making you worry, BB. We're all okay now, Ari says. But, even so. I mutter. Director Clavel claps two times to gain our attention, and he says, hold on, everyone. I've more to say. Then his face turns to a stern one. As previously stated, the requirement for Team Star to disband has been revoked. However, there are still some unsettled matters to discuss. Allow me to provide a few examples. Your protracted truancy, your brazen customization, your unauthorized usage of academy equipment your reckless modification and jeopardous driving of Pokemon-powered vehicles. Need I go on, your flagrant disregard for school rules cannot simply be overlooked. Of course, just because we are not going to be expulsed doesn't mean that we're all getting free. All of us lower our heads with shame, ready for the punishment giving to us. Thus, as punishment, you will all be required to engage in community service. Director Clavel says. Community. Service. I ask. Yes, specifically, I will be asking you to manage the STCs. Director Clavel says. On that stands for, Ash asks, and this is also what I want to know. The Star Training Centers, they shall be facilities for cultivating Pokemon trainers' talents. I plan for the Academy to found them in collaboration with the Pokemon League. The idea came to me when I saw Master Ash and Miss Lily battling their way through your bases. The bases, construction, as well as the battle tactics employed by the students in Team Star, are remarkably unique and creative. I would ask that you continue your team activities but henceforth as STC staff members, using your former bases as training facilities. And that is the sum of it. Does anyone have any concerns? Um, no, 
It sounds like fun, so I don't see how this be anything but a win-win. I say. This may be a weird thing to say since the STCs are supposed to be a punishment and all, but you should totally join in too, Penny. Ortega says. Tis true, we would most happily have you at our sides, my lady. Atticus says. We can go to school together too. That way if anything happens, we'll be there to protect you. Aries says. We were already talking about how great it'd be to have both Team Star and school in our lives. Giacomo says while giving a thumbs up. This'd be a sweet deal for us. So, what do you say? Mela asks. You guys, I mutter. I think you should also do it as well. The talking is Ash, and Lily says, Yeah, Penny, I'm sure you guys can do it for sure. Just give it your best. Huh, B but, um, I just, I slutter. No need to give your response right this moment, Miss Penny. Do take some time to decide. Director Clavel says, For now, at least, I think our little group should go their separate ways. Ah, not to say you should break up Team Star after all. I simply meant it is time to leave. Then Director Clavel turns to Ash and Lily. Master Ash, Miss Lily, Miss Nimona, Master Drandon, Master Luke, Miss Riasa. Please stop by my office tomorrow if you would. The six of them nod as we all go our separate ways, however, there is something that I also need to confess. And I will do it tomorrow and come clean to Director Clavel as well. When we all head to the director's office the next morning, Director Clavel says, Ah, here you are. I wanted to thank you for all your hard work in resolving the situation with Team Star. No problem. I'm glad everything turns out to be fine. I say. If not for you, I suspect I would have done the team a grievous injustice in my choice of punishment for their actions. You have my sincere gratitude. Director Clavel says to us. Just then, we hear the sound of door knocking, and Director Clavel asks, who is it? Um, it's Penny. We recognize the voice belonging to Penny. Ah, Miss Penny, do come in. Director Clavel says as she enters the office. She seems to be expecting us to be here as well. H hello, director, Penny says with a nervous tone. About the STCs. I'd like to work on them together with the rest of Team Star. That's wonderful news. Thank you very much for your favorable response. Director Clavel says. Lily says, and speaking of STCs, can we also work with them as well? I mean, we will definitely want to help Team Star as well. Of course, you can. Director Clavel says. I'm sure that all of the Team Star members are happy to have you as well. Penny also nods at us, before turning into a frown again, but, um. I, I should be punished more heavily than the others, I think. Why so? Because of Operation Starfall, Director Clavel asks. No, not that, because of the other really bad thing I did. Penny lowers her head. And what would that be? I ask, um. You know the LP I gave you all in exchange for helping me with Operation Starfall? I got hold of it sort of, illegally, by hacking the Pokemon League's LP management system. Penny says. All of us look at her with shock. From what I know, the Pokemon League has the best security compared to other things, and to think that she manages to hack through the management system with ease. Ah, I see. That is, quite the revelation. Director Clavel says with a slightly disappointed tone. I did not think such a thing was even possible in the first place. It wasn't all that hard air, I mean. I'm really sorry and I won't do it again. Penny says. Hum. This matter is rather out of my jurisdiction, I'm afraid. Director Clavel says. I will have to consult Ms. Gita, the Pokemon League chairwoman, on how best to proceed. I figured as much. Penny says. I do apologize but I will have to ask the six of you to give us some privacy. Director Clavel says. We all nod as we head out of the director's office. Nimona says, to think that most of the LPs that you get from Operation Starfall were illegally acquired. Riasa says, I just hope that Penny isn't going to quit school because of it. Especially since she is one of the people who can help us with the upcoming quest to Area Zero. Luke says, I agree, but from what we know, Ms. Gita is a nice person. I'm sure that she will manage to sort something out. I say, do not get our hopes high, since hacking is a crime after all. But let's just train our Pokemon while waiting for the result. 
After we decide to train for a while, we are now walking towards the Pokemon League building since it is time for the two of us to take on the Elite Four. Just as we walk out of the school building, Penny is calling us. Ash, Lily, Penny asks. Oh, hi, Penny, I say. There's something I want to talk to you about. Penny says, could you come to meet me in front of the school stairs? You know, where we first met, I'll be waiting. Sure, Lily says. When the six of us head to the staircase, we find Penny waiting for us. Penny says, hasta la vista. We decide to do the same phrase since we're going to help out with the STCs. And she says, the six of us thought up that catchphrase back when we created the team. It's so cringy it's perfect, you know. I see, we're worried about you, I mean, the whole LP thing. Lily says. Anyway, about the LP thing. I thought I was going down big time for hacking the lead point system, but looks like I got away with it. That's great, but what happened? I say, the Pokemon League said they'll waive my debt if I do some volunteer engineering for them. They even asked me to come work for them after I graduate, if you can believe that. Penny says, Director Clavel and that Gita lady kept complimenting me, like, a weird amount. Apparently, I have, outstanding talent, or something. That's great, I mean, working at the league doesn't seem like a bad thing after all. Nimona says, Sorry for calling you out here to meet like this. I'm still not so great with people face to face. I never seem to find the right words, but, um. Th thank you, so much. You saved Team Star, and my friends along with it. I know words won't ever be enough to properly thank you for all you've done, so here. She gave us the TM for Draco Meteor, and then she says, I'm sure you put this to good use. And one more thing, I want to repay the debt I owe you. If you ever think of a way I can do that, just let me know. I'm great with machines and hacking and stuff. So next time, I'll be the one helping you. That's great, we actually have a request, more like having an adventure. I decide to tell her the Area Zero and other things. She was surprised at first, but she agrees to help us out as she is also interested in seeing Area Zero. Be seeing you, then. Asta la Vistar, Penny says. After she leaves, Nimona says, so you're ready to take on the Elite Four. Of course, let's go. I say as we all head to the Pokemon League building. After we're in front of the League, Chairwoman Gita is already there as she's prepared to get inside. Hello, Ash and Lily, I see your friends are here as well. Gita says, so, this is it. You've decided to face the Pokemon League. The final test you must pass to become a champion, is held here in this building. I wish you the best of luck from the bottom of my heart, Ash and Lily. I look forward to meeting you again soon. After she enters the building, Nimona asks, so who is going first? Of course I am, I say, and I'm definitely going to win the league for sure. Lily says, it will be better if we watch how the battles go. Are you ready to face the Pokemon League's champion assessment? The staffer asks me, and I nod, showing the eight badges. Let's see here. Ash Ketchum from Narova University, is it? It appears you have a total of 8 gym badges. Very well. You may now proceed to the interview room. Interview room. I ask with shock. I don't remember the other leagues having something like this. As for the other visitors, please wait until the interview is finished. The others say. Nimona says, well, since it is a one-to-one -one interview, let's wait until it is finished before we head inside. I see. Drandon says, after I get into the room, I see that Rika, the Elite Four member, is sitting at the table as she greets me. Thank you for coming today. Please, do have a seat. I nod as I sit on the chair, as Rika seems to be having an interview with me. I, Rika, will be your interviewer. Let's get started with the first portion of the champion assessment. We begin with the interview. First things first, let me see how many gym badges you have. She looks at the computer and says, excellent. You have all eight. She turns to me. Next, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you wouldn't mind, Ash. Not at all. I say, please think carefully, as you may automatically fail the interview depending on your answers. Rika says as I gulp a little. As the interview begins, these are the questions and answers that I do in the test. How did you get here today? 
I come by walking with my friends, who are outside waiting for me. Very good, very good, please tell me the name of the school you are enrolled in. The school is Narova University. Ah, that's right, so, what brings you to the Pokemon League today? I come here to become a champion so I can fulfill my promise with my friends. Yes, indeed, why else would you be here, I suppose? Now, what do you intend to do if and when you become a champion? I want to become stronger until I reach the goal of being the Pokemon Master. I see, interesting. Tell me, which of the eight gyms gave you the most difficulty? I think it is the Glaciato Gym, I failed a lot of times with the gym test until I pass. I see, and what was the name of the gym leader you faced there? It's Grusha, the Sub-Zero Shredder. I'm glad you seem to remember. But do you remember which type of Pokemon Grusha used? It's Ice type. Although the Altaria wasn't an ice type until it terrestrialized. Wonderful. Building the skills needed for the champion assessment is no small feat. You must have met a lot of Pokemon to get here, Ash. What was the category of the first Pokemon you chose to be your partner? Since I'm from the Kanto region, my first partner is Pikachu, the mouse Pokemon. However, if you mean here in Paldia region, Lily and I share our Pokédex and we get all three starter Pokemon from Director Clavel. Very good, very good. Now, please forgive me, but I'm going to repeat a previous question. Remind me, what do you intend to do if and when you do become a champion? As I said before, I want to become stronger until I reach the goal of being the Pokemon Master. Ah, yes, that's right. Next is the final question for this interview. Do you like Pokemon? Of course I like Pokemon. Good job, kiddo. I'm glad that it's finally over. My hands are sweating and Pikachu has already left my shoulder because of the sweat. That about wraps up the interview. And let me be the first to congratulate you, Ash. You just passed the first part of the champion assessment. Time to switch gears and get ready for the next segment. The second segment is what we call the Elite Test. And you'll be facing the Elite Four in Pokemon Battles. I guess that's pretty obvious from the name of the test, huh? Yeah, it was obvious. I say. Anyway. We're the best the league has to offer. You'll be facing us four in a row, no turning back. Rika says, this won't be a cakewalk, I promise you that. Make sure you're all ready, then go into the room behind me. I nod as I take a deep breath because the real deal is going to come. Since Lily is going to have her own interview, I was just chatting with Nimona and the others about what just happened while waiting for her to finish. So you have to do some sort of interview before you can fight the Elite Four. Riasa says, that's new, I mean, no other regions would have done that. I know, I say, I was sweating bullets, but now I can finally get to face the Elite Four. I'm glad that you've finished the first try, I mean, I failed once and I have to do it all over again. Nimona says, as Lily comes out of the building, I ask, how is it? Lily smiles and says, I also passed on my first try. That's great, Drandon says. Now both of you can fight the Elite Four. When we enter the battlefield, Rika also comes with us as she goes to the other side of the battlefield. Now then, let's get this started, EH. Let good old Rika be the first of the Elite Four to take you on. Rika says. So you're the first one that I have to face. This is interesting, I say. I'd say I'll go easy on you, but. I'd be lying. Think fast. Rika says as she takes out her Pokeball revealing it to be a Whiskash. A Whiskash, I say, then I'll go with Dragonite. After sending out my first Pokemon, Rika says, I finally get to battle you. I've been looking forward to this, so don't you give up too soon. Whiskash starts off with Blizzard, dealing a lot of damage to Dragonite. Dragonite, hang in there and use Dragon Dance to boost the speed. Dragonite starts to do the Dragon Dance, and then I have it go for the Hurricane hitting the Whiskers Pokemon. Now Dragon Claw, I say, but just as Dragonite approaches near, Rika smirks, and then some portals appear and beams come from it to hit Dragonite. That's future sight, Nimona gasps, wait, seriously, Lily asks in shock, finish it with Blizzard, Rika says, and Whiskash goes for the Blizzard attack, easily knocking Dragonite out of the match. Are you kidding me, Dragonite is a pseudo-legendary, Drandon says. How come it loses so easily? 
Riasa says, you have to remember that it is four times weak to ice after all. I sigh and recall my Dragonite, sending out Gardevoir as my next Pokemon. A Gardevoir, quite an interesting choice. Rika says as she has Whiskash uses Earth Power. I look at Gardevoir, who dodges the attack by using Teleport without my command. Riasa says, there it is. The eye contacting dodging. Like sister like brother. Luke says, I have Gardevoir use Psychic, hitting the Pokemon time after time. Whiskash however uses Future Sight again, and then goes for Muddy Water, hitting Gardevoir and lowering the accuracy. Let's keep it up. Blizzard. That move again, I'm not letting it hit Gardevoir. And thanks Gardevoir quickly dodges out of the way, and it continues to dodge the future sight until the attack hits Whiskash. What? Rika is shocked. Finish with Energy Ball, I say, and Gardevoir's attack finally defeats Rika's Whiskash. Well done, my next Pokemon is going to be Camerupt. Rika says as she sends out her second Pokemon. So Rika is a ground type Elite 4 member. Lily says. I frown. This is not good for me because most of the Pokemon that I registered for the League Challenge isn't good with ground types. Gardevoir starts with a Shadow Ball, but Camerupt responds with Fire Blast. The two attacks collide with each other, but when Camerupt uses Yawn, Gardevoir falls asleep and the Fire Blast overpowers Shadow Ball and hits the Pokemon. Gardevoir, wake up! I gasp in horror, and Rika decides to finish Gardevoir with the Flash Cannon attack. This isn't good for me. I mutter as I recall Gardevoir. Skulldurge, I choose you. I decide to go with the Fire-type starter Pokemon in this battle. Camerupt goes for Flash Cannon, but Skulldurge takes the hit and doesn't seem to be affected. Use Torch Song, I yell. The damage doesn't seem to do much, but it raises the special attack of my Pokemon. Camerupt uses Yawn again, and Skulldurge is drowsy. Then it goes for Earthquake, which deal a lot of damage. Shadow Ball. I try to let the attack knock out Camerupt, but after the attack, the Camerupt is still standing, and Skulldurge falls asleep. Oh no. Nemona gasps in horror. Now finish with Earthquake. Rika says. Skulldurge is caught by the ground-type attack, and then it is also knocked out of the battle. Come on. I lost three Pokemon already while Rika has only lost one Pokemon. The odds aren't in my favor, that's what I know. Lily mutters with concern. Ash. I sigh as I take out my next Pokeball. Ice Q, I choose you. An Ice type. Not a good type matchup for Camerupt, but I still want to bet for it. Luke says, at least Ice Q has the ability Ice Face that can help him out. Now let's get rid of that face of your Pokemon. Fire Blast. I have Ice Q dodge the attack and go for Headbutt. But Camerupt evades the attack and hits Ice Q with the Flash Cannon, getting rid of the Ice Face. Use Snowscape. I yell, and Ice Q sets up the snow condition and also gets its ice face back, then I have it use Surf Attack, which lands a direct hit. Camerupt struggles to get up, but it faints. Good, now just one more and we're even. I say, I'll see you try, Donphan. She sends out her third Pokemon. Be careful, Ice Q, it might have some rock or steel moves that can damage you. Aurora Veil, using the weather, I decided to set up the defenses. Donphan goes for Stone Edge, the attack causes Ice Q to get hit, and the Ice Face is broken as well. There goes the Ice Face. I mutter. Then Donphan goes for Iron Head, but Ice Q dodges the attack and retaliates with Ice Spinner, defeating Donphan and tying the match. Now the real battle is just getting started. I say with a smile. Don't think it will be that easy. She sends out her fourth Pokemon, which is Dugtrio. It goes for the Sucker Punch before I have Ice Q use Ice Spinner, and then it defeats Ice Q with the Sandstorm and Stone Edge. Dugtrio is also a fast Pokemon. Luke says, Damn, I mutter, Lucario, you're up next. My fifth Pokemon is Lucario, and Lily says, Wait, if Lucario is the fifth Pokemon of Ash already, that means Ash's final Pokemon are weak against ground types. And Ash has to figure out a way to defeat three more Rika's Pokemon. Nimona says. I have Lucario go for the extreme speed, which manages to hit Dugtrio even though it tries to dig underground to dodge it. Use Earthquake. Rika says. Lucario. Jump into the air and use Dragon Pulse. I yell, and Lucario nods as he jumps into the air and attacks Dugtrio. But when he lands on the ground, 
Lucario is hit by the earthquake again and this time, he is knocked out. You're kidding me, Lucario is knocked out as well, Lily asks. If only that the League didn't forbid the use of Mega Evolution, Z moves, or Dynamax. Nimona says, a Mega Lucario probably can defeat the Dugtrio with ease. I frown and I say, Pikachu, you're my last Pokemon. Rika says, looks like this is going to be an easy battle after all. Don't be so sure, I say as I take out the Terra Orb. It is a good thing that Terrestal Phenomenon doesn't have a time limit. Here we go, Pikachu. I use the item on Pikachu, and much to my delight, Pikachu's Terra type is Ice type this time. Ice type Terra type, that is interesting. Rika says as she has Dugtrio use Stone Edge, but Pikachu dodges and attacks with Splishy Splash. Dugtrio hides underground to avoid the attack but Pikachu knocks it out with the icicle crash once it gets out of the ground. The fifth Pokemon from Rika is a Toadscrewl, much to my delight that it is four times weak than ice. Use Spore, Rika says, and I am not going to let Pikachu fall asleep by the attack. Dig to dodge the attack. Pikachu dodges the spores and then digs underground. When it pops out, I yell, floaty fall. Pikachu jumps into the air and lands the attack, causing Toadscrewl to flinch. Now use Icicle Crash. Pikachu goes for the Ice-type attack again, and it finally knocks the Toadscrewl out. Nahahaha, impressive. You really are something else, kiddo. Rika smiles as she sends out her final Pokemon, which is a Clodsire. Let's finish this. Go on, Clodsire. Shake things up a bit. Then Rika also takes out the Terra Orb and places it on Clodsire, making it a pure ground-type. Pikachu, I trust you. Splishy splash, I yell, but Clodsire goes for protect to block the attack. Then it uses liquidation and hits Pikachu's face. I have Pikachu use grass knot, but the earthquake is able to break the grass. Pikachu continues to dodge the liquidation attacks, and I have Pikachu use icicle crash to hit Clodsire. That wasn't enough, I say after seeing how Clodsire keeps using protect to dodge the attack. I need to play it safely. Then I have Pikachu use Grass Knot again, and this time with the add of Floaty Fall. Clodsire tries to defeat Pikachu with Toxic, but I have Pikachu finish it with the Splishy Splash again. Not bad. Rika claps her hand after recalling Clodsire. Talk about unfair. No way was I ever gonna win that one. Still, though, what a great battle. Felt good even to lose. Well, I was just lucky. I mean, my Pikachu is special. Its Terra type is actually random, and I never thought it would land on Ice type. I say. Still, not a whole lot of trainers have the skill to make it past the elite test. But who knows? I'm beginning to think you might be the one of the few that do, Ash. Rika says. Better stay on your toes, though, the second of the elite four is stronger than me. I will. I say. Lily says. Ash, you really made us worry a lot. I'm sorry but at least I'm able to win the match. I chuckle, now it's your turn, Lily. Lily smiles and we see Rika healing up all of her Pokemon and ready to fight Lily. Lily's team consists of Snowy, Heracross, Meoscarada, Noivern, Basculegion, and Revavroom. She doesn't struggle as much as I did, and she also wins against Rika with ease. You're up next, Squirt. Come on out, Rika yells, and the one who comes out of the door is Poppy who says, Kumiing. So Poppy is the next one. Poppy says, oh wow. Did you lose, Rika? Yeah, I did. Both of them are no pushovers, let me tell you. I'll be watching from the side. Avenge me if you can, eh. This is surprising. Rika is going to watch the match with Nimona and the others. Poppy smiles, you bet I will. Now the next Elite Four member we're facing is Poppy and I'm still surprised that a little kid like her is a part of the Elite Four. Good thing that there is a healing machine in the room so we can just heal our Pokemon before facing the next one. It's so cool you made it this far. But this is where you say bye-bye, mister. Poppy says, all my Pokemon are super tough. Your weak attacks won't work on them at all. They'll bounce right off, you'll see. I can't wait for you to meet my friends, so, here they come. She sends out Kaparaja as her first Pokemon, so this young girl is a Steel-type trainer. That is not something I would have expected. Lucario, you're first. 
My Lucario has been wanting to prove itself in this match, and I'm going to let him do it. Go on, Raja, smush him. Kaparaja starts by using the heavy slam, and I have Lucario block it with power up punch, both attacks cancel each other out. Stealth rock, Poppy yells, as Kaparaja sets up the stones in the area. I have Lucario use Aura Sphere, damaging Kaparaja. When it goes for Bone Rush, Kaparaja uses high horsepower and deals a lot of damage to Lucario. Use Play Rough, Poppy yells, counter with Bone Rush, I yell. Both Pokemon are fighting with brute force, and neither attacks manage to hit each other until Lucario's Bone Rush slams into the giant elephant's body. Good, use Aura Sphere, high horsepower. Before Kaparaja can hit the attack, Lucario's Aura Sphere slams it into the wall, knocking it out of the battle. Magnazone. Poppy's second Pokemon is the Magnazone, and it begins with Light Scream, setting up the special defense. Use Bone Rush. I have Lucario use the attack, but Magnazone goes for try attack, causing Lucario to be frozen in place. Oh no, Lucario's frozen. Lily gasps. Magnazone tries to attack with discharge, breaking the ice, and hits Lucario but Lucario uses Life Dew to heal itself so that it won't faint. Life Dew seems to be a smart move. Luke says, considering that Lucario's health is quite low. Lucario, you can still do this, right? I ask, and Lucario nods. Good, use Bone Rush again. This time Lucario manages to hit the Pokemon, dealing a lot of damage. Use Discharge again. Lucario is hit by the attack and gets paralyzed, but Lucario throws an Aura Sphere, hitting Magnazone, and knocks it out of the battle. Lucario's performance is unexceptional this time, Nimona says. But I'm not sure if it can handle the next one on its own. Lily says with concern. Poppy's third Pokemon is Orthworm, and it uses Iron Head. Lucario cancels the attack with the Power Up Punch. Earthquake. Poppy yells and Orthworm uses the attack and Lucario's paralysis causes him to be unable to dodge, therefore it is defeated. There goes one of my Pokemon. I mutter as I recall Lucario, sending out Gardevoir as my next Pokemon. Gardevoir takes the hit from the stealth rocks, but it doesn't seem to do much. Orthworm uses another iron head, and I have Gardevoir dodge the attack using teleport. Use mystical fire, I yell, but just as the attack is about to hit, Orthworm sets up the sandstorm and covers itself from the attack, using Iron Tail and dealing a lot of damage. Gardevoir. No. I yell in horror, and Orthworm uses Dig again and lands an Iron Head after coming out behind Gardevoir, slamming the Pokemon to the wall and knocking it out. Now that's two losses on both sides. Rika says. I wonder how it will go. I decide to use Ice Q next. As usual, it gets hit by the Stealth Rocks, and Lily says, Stealth Rocks is a slight problem. I know, but I am not going to give up. I say, Orthworm goes for the Iron Head, but Ice Q uses Surf to wash it away. Now use Headbutt, I yell, and Ice Q manages to hit Orthworm with the attack, but it goes for Iron Tail and breaks the ice face. Quick, Snowscapes, I yell, and Ice Q sets up the snow and stops the sandstorm, then the ice face is back. Now use Weather Ball, I say, but Poppy smirks, use Body Press. Just then, the fighting type move breaks the ice face once more, and it goes for the Iron Head, plummeting back down to the battlefield, causing him major damage. Ice Q, Aurora Veil, I decided to set up the defenses, but Ice Q is still defeated by Iron Head. Damn it, now I have three Pokemon left, I mutter as I decide to go with Pikachu. Ah, Pikachu's next. Poppy says, then she has Orthworm uses Earthquake, but Pikachu dodges the attack by jumping into the air and I have it use Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt hits Orthworm, making it paralyzed. Use Brick Break, Pikachu jumps on top of Orthworm and uses the Brick Break attack, landing the hit. Now we'll start the counterattack. Use Flame Bolt, when the fire attack hits Orthworm, it groans in pain before falling to the ground fainted. No, Orthworm, Poppy yells in horror. Now that's three on three. I say. Poppy's fourth Pokemon is Bronzong and start things off by having it use Zen Headbutt, hitting Pikachu. Pikachu. Use Crunch Attack. Pikachu tries to attack the Bronzong, but it manages to dodge the attack by floating into the air. Use Earthquake. Poppy commands and I have Pikachu dodges the attack, 
but Pikachu didn't dodge in time and suffered a direct hit. Pikachu seems to be taking a lot of damage right now, Riasa says. Pikachu, use Shadow Volt. I have Pikachu fire the ghost type attack, but it is cancelled by Bronzong's rock blast. Bronzong attempts to use Iron Head, but Pikachu dodges and jumps into the air, landing Flame Bolt and hitting Bronzong, knocking it to the ground. Bronzong, use Earthquake again. Poppy yells, but Pikachu goes for Floaty Fall to dodge the attack and make Bronzong flinch. Finish with Brick Break, I yell, and Pikachu's attack causes Bronzong to be knocked out. Now Ash is in the lead again, Lily says, but there are still two Pokemon for Poppy, I can't say for sure. Nimona says, the fifth Pokemon for Poppy is Corviknight, and good thing that Pikachu has a type advantage. Corviknight goes for Iron Defense to start things off. Pikachu, Electro Ball, I have Pikachu throws the attack, but Corviknight destroys the attack using Steel Wing. Then I have Pikachu use Electro Rock, but the body press blocks the attack and strikes at Pikachu, dealing some damage. Brave Bird, Poppy yells, but I have Pikachu dodge by hiding underground using Dig, and when it comes out, I have it use Splishy Splash, paralyzing the Corviknight with a water move. Looks like Pikachu has a lot of movesets. Rika remarks, fire types, water types, how did he manage to have it learn all of those moves? Training with all kinds of Pokemon, Pikachu likes to learn and become stronger like Ash. Lily says, I have Pikachu use Icicle Crash, dealing a lot of damage to Corviknight. Corviknight uses Steel Wing again, but Pikachu manages to block the attack and lands a Thunderbolt, knocking it out of the battle. Now there is only one Pokemon left for Poppy and Ash still has three. Luke says. Poppy's last Pokemon is actually strong. Nimona says. I'm not scared. My last Pokemon will turn things around. Poppy yells as she sends out the final Pokemon, Tinkaton. Tinkaton. I mutter with shock. Then she says, it's time to get dressed up all pretty, Tinky. Then she takes out the Terra Orb and throws it at Tinkaton, making it a pure steel type. Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. I have Pikachu use the electric attack, but Tinkadon shakes off the attack like nothing and goes for the Gigadon hammer, slamming into Pikachu and knocking it out. Pikachu, I yell in horror, and Lily winces, that sure is going to be hurt. I bring Pikachu to Lily so that she can get a hold of him, and I decide to go with Dragonite. Since you've terrestrialized your Tinkadon, that means it is not a fairy type anymore. So Dragonite can hurt it with the dragon moves. Draco Meteor. I have Dragonite go for the attack, but Tinkadon uses its hammer to knock all the meteors down, before using play rough on Dragonite, dealing a significant amount of damage. Dragonite. Hang in there and use Fire Punch. Dragonite charges and punches the Tinkadon, but Tinkadon uses Stone Edge, when Dragonite tries to dodge, it gets hit by the last one. Dragonite. I yell in horror as Dragonite falls to the ground. Gigaton Hammer, Poppy yells, and the Gigaton Hammer slams at Dragonite, also knocking the Pokemon out in the end. That Gigaton Hammer sure is a giant problem, Luke says. The only disadvantage for the Gigaton Hammer is the usage, but Poppy has Tinkadon wield it like it was nothing. Riasa says. I recall Dragonite and send out my final Pokemon, Skulldurge, and I also use the Terra Orb to make it a pure fire type. Skulldurge, Torch Song. The Firebird on top of the Pokemon shoots at the Tinkadon, dealing a lot of damage. Skulldurge also raises its special attack because of the move. Use Stone Edge. Tinkadon lands the move and deals a lot of damage to Skulldurge, but Skulldurge goes for Shadow Ball, returning the damage back to her. Gigaton Hammer. Not that move again, and I'm not going to let Tinkadon land that hit, so I have Skulldurge use Sing, causing it to fall asleep. Oh no. Poppy yells in horror and I have Skulldurge use Torch Song again, finally knocking out the Tinkadon. Ooh ah, mm move, Poppy seems to be crying after the loss of the battle, and it takes Rika and me to calm her down before she can heal her Pokemon and fight against Lily. Of course, after Lily defeats Poppy, which is also a hard battle for her especially since Tinkadon's Gigaton Hammer is powerful. Poppy has to be upset again and she rushes to Rika and cries, wah, wah. I wanted to take revenge on you, Rika. Pretty sure you mean, take revenge for, me, Squirt. Don't think I did anything wrong by you. Rika sighs, 
for some reason we find that actually funny and adorable. Hate to say it, but you lost, Poppy. Better call the next guy. Poppy stops crying and gasps, oh, that's right. I haven't had to do this in a long time. She rushes towards the door and yells, it's your turn, Mr. Larry. Wait, did she say Larry? The medley gym leader, and much to our shock, Larry comes out from the room, with the same attire as the gym battle, the same briefcase it is holding, the only difference is that he's wearing the glove that signals the member of the Elite Four. Are you kidding me? Larry is not only a gym leader but an Elite Four member. Lily asks, Unbelievable. I say, I don't know that can be the case. Hello there, it's me, Larry. Larry says to me, still with his normal tone. To be continued, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts and reviews in the comment box. Now I will see you in the next video.